Captain Gill. Here we are, the drinker, and Az, and Gary, and the long man. We're no, all here. No, <laughs> and it's St. Patrick's Day, so I've got McGuinness here. Oh. So cheers, everyone. Mm. Cheers. Um, I I that, that was I the funniest cut off still I've in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I was just chilling, just, just doing the thing, like about to start up, and it's like, hot toys have really... <laughs> 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 So you want to what you were telling us? Yeah, yeah I want to, I want closure on this anecdote. <laughs> so <it's nice. laughs> yeah, hot, hot Toys are, have put up for pre-order Gilgamesh from the Eternals. Ooh, mm. everyone's oh, favorite. I almost got to get. I'm sure that's going to sell like uh, hotcakes. I got to get that uh, Scarlet Witch one where she's all. Well, you, you, could, you, you could buy it. You could buy it and then turn it into Tough Guy from uh, Train from Busan. Train to Busan. Yeah, you could. You could. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seriously though, you have to get that Scarlet Witch one with the, with the funny face, just so that it's going to become very famous over time, okay? And you'll, it'll be a collector's item. <laughs> well, people will collect it just so they can burn it. Wow! I, will, I would frame it. I would take care of it. It's it face. protected. My Gina, my Gina Carano arrived today. Looks oh. good. Yeah, did you put that on Twitter? I think I saw pictures of it. It's good. Sorry, yeah. what, what did he say? What do you want me to? Hey, show it. Or you oh. got pictures? Yeah, I put I'll some. Yeah, that. I put some pictures on um, on uh, Instagram and uh, Twitter. Uh, but uh, there she is. Now remove the clothes as. <laughs> Already tried. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I broke three of these fucking figures yeah. trying to get them off. Yeah, <laughs> cost me a fortune. This, yeah, this is the most expensive Cara Dune statue of a man. Yeah, no, it looks good, man. It looks really good. Is it like, uh, does it move, or is it just like a statue? Statue. This is just statue, statue. But it's it's really this uh, like this gun, this rifle she's got at the back fits in, and then it slides into the hand, which is quite cool. Yeah, nice. it's magnetic. It's really cool. It's really cool on that Scarlet Witch thing. It the face isn't the worst thing. Look at how skinny her arms are. So that's like scanned off her body somewhat, and she looks like anorexic. Scarlet. Yeah. I think this no, the Scarlet Witch is a third party. It's just a regular Fison body. Really, that's yeah. an anorexic body that they used. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not a. Uh, that is not a licensed one. That Scarlet Witch is third party. Nice. Well, anyway, gentlemen, we are here, and yeah, I've I've assembled a crack team because I'm doing a little little journey through Middle Earth at the moment. I talked about Fellowship of the Ring a couple of weeks ago with Voxis. And yeah, we, we'd kind of, I know we'd covered that a little bit on your channel, Gary, so I didn't want to just like go over old ground, but I know none of us have really had a stream where we've all talked about two towers and it's like the next one to do. So I thought, damn, it's just, it's got to be done, man. I'd love to talk about, you know, all three movies and work our way through, but um, yeah, thank you guys for coming in to do this. Sure. No problem. Yeah, this no is my problem. favorite one out of the three. Really? Yes, it is. What's your favorite of the two people here? Um, I, I'd say it probably is actually. It's a really close one between this and Fellowship for me, but I, I think Two Towers edges it because I love the development of Gollum. I love the Battle of Helm's Deep. I love mm. like Rohan. And um, you oh, know, right. I, I think uh, yeah, every, because everyone's split into different groups. Like there's, um, you know, people get a lot more screen time. There's a bit more time to develop the, the characters. They're given a bit more space. Um, and I think it works really well from that point of view. There's a, there's a few little issues like, um, you know, Mary and Pippin are kind of just in a holding pattern. They, they don't do a huge amount. Um, and yeah, we, we can talk a little bit more, I guess, as we go through it, but um, yeah, <laughs> you could kind of argue as well that Frodo and Sam are really, no closer to their goal than they were at the beginning <laughs> but i think that's just the nature of the story like that's kind of what happens in the books as well 
yeah, and, and we still learn a lot about like a lot of stuff happens, you know. This is the thing. This is a, it was it was nice. I was like, oh, I got to watch this movie ready for the stream, and I watched it, and I was like, ooh, that's, <laughs> it's like a movie people care about, isn't it? When they made it, they cared about this. So every single line of dialogue, I get to listen to it and know that it means something instead of just being, you know, out of character or random or plot progressing. It's like no, it's all for a reason. Um, Two Towers was my favorite for a while. And then I couldn't pick between three of them. And then I settled on Fellowship after a while. And I think it's because my boy Boromir. I just, I just can't, can't separate myself from how much I enjoyed that. But also just the introduction mm. of everybody, bringing them together. Moria, Amon Hen. It's, it's like, and all the introduction of the world as well. It's such a wonderful little bit of escapism. But uh, Return of the King as well. I just don't want to, I mean, just letting everyone know. Return of the King is fucking amazing too. They yeah. all are. As for which one, like, is the least masterpiece to me? It's like, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> they all should have won Best Picture. Uh, Ian McKellum should have won Best Supporting Actor, all three movies. Uh, uh, um, uh, Sean Astin should have won Best Supporting Actor in Return of the King. Like, they, like, they should have won it all. Uh, that's, yeah. you know, Oscars were an effing joke even back then. Uh, they're all masterpieces. I just, I, I I like Theoden. King Theoden's mm. whole awesome. arc is yeah. freaking great. I it's love difficult it. to pick a movie for me because when I tend to watch this, I tend to watch all three of them as one. Mm -hmm. So I don't, you know, try to to separate them. If you know what I mean. It, it, to me, it's just one long uh, arc. Uh, I mean, only maybe I think only like two months ago. Uh, I just had another Sunday of watching all three back to back. Uh, just, just watching it was just great. Um, I love the Rohimran stuff from Two Towers. I love the Gondor stuff from Return of the King. Uh, then, of course, just the the setup because I uh, my first dealing with Tolkien was the animated uh, Lord of the oh, Rings. Actually one, yeah, yeah, with the, uh, the so uh, Fellowship has always got a bit of a special place. Uh, with uh, with that being my first, but yeah, Sean Bean's great. I mean, he's amazing in in Fellowship and his character and and just the the way he, yeah, the sort of slip and the fall and then the redemption all in kind of one, um, uh, and then in the Two Towers, you know, we see it's it's really interesting the way that they don't they don't have the picture, they don't have the full picture of Boromir and. Uh, so they just find him dead and how, why, uh, you know. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's so tough to pick one because there's so many great, great moments in all three. Uh, but, Hel you know, Battle of Helm's Deep is crazy. It's uh, it's fantastic stuff. And then when Gandalf appears at the end, it's just like, oh, mm. it's just stirring stuff, you know, just gets you. It gets you. Uh, gets you. Is, uh, the Balrog is still just one of my favorite movie moments of all time. I was mm -hmm. absolutely blown away, and I still am. It's such an amazing scene. Especially well, you, you getting mean... the part two in Two Towers is like a bonus. It's like, oh, shit, I get to watch what happens after they fall? This, I, this I, is something I was going to pick up on, right? Um, my analysis of the film would begin with a slight criticism in that oh. I could have done without that scene right at the start between Gandalf and the Balrog. I would rather they had left that until later. Um, I know people who've read the books obviously know what happens to Gandalf, but it would have been better to keep that out of it for now so that when he does reappear, it's it's more of a shock. Um, because obviously the clear implication is, right, okay, you get to see him fall down into the pit. Um, with the Balrog, he's still alive, he's still fighting it. Clearly, he did not die, as we thought, in Fellowship. Um, I disagree. And... I disagree. Interesting. My, because my I, I, I didn't be... like the, the fall. I didn't like the, the, the slightly over-the-top like CGI falling down this endless pit, and he catches his sword in midair, and it's, it's, a, little it. bit, it's a little <laughs> bit too much. Oh, my God, I loved it. I freaking loved it. That was like one of the <laughs> So, I think Absolutely. an angle here that's super interesting that I'm not sure is being accounted for is that um, I don't know that we know it happened exactly the way we saw it there as opposed to it being Frodo thinking about what happened to his mentor. I mean, we don't know. Like, I know from the books that is essentially exactly what happened. Um, yeah, yeah. And, you know, they, they plunge into this big underwater or underground sea. The, the Balrog's fire gets extinguished. It becomes like this big slimy monster that they fight like from the... the base of the mountain all the way up to the top and then he eventually kills it and it dies 
So it's essentially exactly what you see on screen. Um, and yeah, if you show something like that to the audience, nobody's going to come away from that thinking like, oh, it's clearly just a dream. Gandalf's definitely dead. Like they're going to see that and think, oh shit, like I think he's think he's going to come back. He's alive. He's fighting this thing. He didn't just die when he fell off of that um, that ledge, that bridge. I don't know about that. We we know he fell, and we continue to know that he fell while fighting this thing. If someone said while watching Fellowship, I don't think he's dead. Yeah, he fell down a big hole, but he's a wizard. I think I think he might be okay. That's fine. And if someone else goes, no, he's definitely dead. Look how they treated it. And it's like, okay, that's fine too. Um, bear in mind, he doesn't come back, Gandalf the Grey. Uh, and there is a difference in the characters, I think, that's meaningful that does help with a lot of people's criticism that you can't kill a person, bring them straight back. Like, I, I think it's more meaningful than that. But at the same time, I really do value that... Um, our first scene is with Frodo, technically speaking. This is to represent Frodo's trauma, like, already. He's just constantly thinking about what happened to Gandalf, and he's alone now. Two Towers begins with Frodo mm -hmm. having no one to help him except Sam. I, I like that whole, um, yeah, I like that whole aspect of, you know, at the end of the last movie, you see them, um, you know, heading off and embarking on this journey together, and you know it's a very it's a very um complete way of ending that first movie you know these guys have split off from the rest of the fellowship and they're yeah. going to strike out on their own and it seems all very heroic and everything um and then you see them in this movie and it's like it's raining they're lost they don't know like what to do they, they're kind of uh they're downcast and they're they're really despairing and that, it's great because it establishes that mood of like okay now shit's getting real um you know it's not just Normal um, safety nets, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's no one to tell them where to go. There's no no more guides yeah. left. It's just down to their own resourcefulness. And like they literally end up going in circles, as it turns out. Um, and I think that's that's a, a pretty good way to start it. Like I say, I would have been happy for the the film to give us just that that little flashback to when Gandalf falls off the ledge, um, and that would have been it. We don't need to see all the rest of the the fight between him and the Balrog. Um, it would have just been Frodo waking up and them just like wandering around on this this kind of um almost hopeless mission just completely overwhelmed by the scale of it all um that would have been enough for me but i i get why other people you know like what they see there yeah, i love yeah, it. i i, I saw it as frodo's you know frodo realizing that they are now on their own gandalf was the one that was keeping the fellowship together clearly yeah um also keeping people like boromir in check uh, as well and when when gandalf went that was it the um the, the figurehead had gone so i just saw it as now that sam and frodo were out away from the fellowship on their own on this you know what was going to be an insane journey to go into mordor uh i just thought he was thinking back to, you know because they've had a friendship for a good while and i just saw it as uh him realizing that his kind of tethers to um to Middle Earth is gone, uh, and this is, well, for want of a better phrase, shit just got real. And it's just him and him and Sam are, uh, together it's like alone. And, uh, very gray place, rocky. It's cold. It's misty. Yeah, like it's yeah. very inhumane almost as a start. And then within moments, that. we see that you know the rain come pouring down, and they're huddled in a corner, and it's you know it's. The, you know, it, everything's against them. The environment's against them. The weather's against them. Everything is against them. And the ring. It's like moment. that romantic view of what an adventure is, where you're just like having crazy, exciting times and, and, you know, like flitting from danger to danger with no fear. And then the harsh reality of what it really is. And it's like just trudging through the mist and the rain. Like you're I'm cold, you're tired, you're, you're wet. <laughs> you don't know where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's like what it would really be. Um, and I love. There's a great line from Sam where he's he's just like we're we're lost, Mister Frodo. I don't think Mister Gandalf meant for us to come this way. You know, even Sam, like the most optimistic person ever, is like, "Yeah, we're fucked. I don't know what to do." <laughs> and that's, I think you feel that when Gandalf comes back into the story, his like direction is so powerful and clear straight away. Like Wormtongue up to that point. I don't mean to jump too far ahead, but we, we're probably <laughs> going to do that a little bit, right? But like. Uh, Oh, yeah, he's been quite a power in the story as he's been introduced, influential and uh, manipulative. I love the the opening to him with Gandalf. He's just like, "Keep your fork 
cutting big tiny pieces. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. He's yeah. like, I did not pass through fire and death to bandy witless words with a. Mm. Well, I can't remember what the last part of it is. Bandy words with a witless one. Or a witless witless one. worm, was it? Yeah. The crooked words with a with witless, a witless one. worm. Yeah. Fucking words. What an myth. insult. And then revealing the staff, and Grima's like, oh, fuck. I told <laughs> you to take his staff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so yeah. good. But he's and a I love great actor that, like, as well, that guy. You know, everyone's fighting oh, around God. him, like Legolas but, and Aragorn are just taking down guards left and right, and Gandalf just walks through this fucking mm, melee towards uh, yep. towards Theoden. That's because um, Gandalf's baller as fuck. He's a oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the original <laughs> baller. Also, on the casting of uh, Grima, the casting throughout the films is just incredible. Mm, they nailed yep. the, whoever... Who, because, uh, Drigger, we've had not fond things to say about Orlando Bloom in our current you found the recording set of <laughs> yeah, but like he's perfect in this. Uh, oh yeah, he yeah, he's really great. gives off the sense of the uh, the stoic elf, even though it hmm. could just be that that's all he's capable of as an actor. But that's fine. Like, I I think you know the, there's I guess there's a bit of an art to playing that stoic character who who doesn't give much away, but still being able to convey emotions like grief and loss and just complete shock. And I think he um, does. If you yeah, look at he, him, he does post Moria when they get out uh, you could definitely see it on his face not to mention by the way this is another reason why I love Two Towers the blossoming relationship of Gimli and Legolas it is yeah. so <laughs> yeah. fucking good <laughs> which um, by the way on my rewatch I genuinely think it is the experiences of fellowship plus a significant moment and that is where Legolas puts his line of, life on the line to put it in front of Gimli's I think that's the moment where Gimli's mm. like oh and from was that when on, the, the Rohirrim surround them? Yeah. And he, he's like, I, I would cut your head up off your shoulders if you were a bit taller. And Legolas just draws his bow and he's like, well, you'd have to get through me first. Mm. He says, you'll die before you're, you'd raise your sword or yeah. something oh, like that. Okay, that's it. It's, um, oh, it's, it's, it's great because Gimli's surprised and you can almost see a sense of like, calm down, Legolas, fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Well, it's, it's great because uh, when they eventually stand down, you just see this little shot of Gimli going... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's like unclench your asshole, boy. <laughs> that informs, like, because again, I've just, I've finished it right before we started this. So, the in Helm's Deep when it's starting up, and he says, um, "Would you like me to describe it to you, or should I find you a box?" I think Gimli, for a moment there, could have been pissed off, or maybe shouted at the person, but he just looks at him and goes, "Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah." <laughs> I, yeah, I think uh, right. going back to the when the Rohirrim surround them, uh, I think it just it, what I loved about that it it really sets them up. The riders of Rohirrim as a as a an organized yeah. threat. You know the way they just mm -hmm. just so effortlessly surrounded spikes in, and it, it was just like wow. You know these guys know how to circle a prey, lock a prey, kill yeah. a prey if they want. Yeah, and this is all obviously done with sense. with horse. They're supposed to be their friends. So the, them coming at him so aggressive is like, dude, shit's bad. Rohan is fucked. Yeah, they don't yeah. know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, they don't know what's going on anymore so with Grey Worm doing his business and being cast out from Rohimran. And well, uh, that's why yeah, I the love movie, the Rohimran the... stuff. But, and then, yeah. okay. when they come out of the... Go, um, wait, wait, wait. You keep saying sorry. Rohimran. I got to protect <laughs> Gary. <laughs> like, it's Rohirrim. Rohirrim. <laughs> Rohirrim, sorry. I, I, it's, when I, I've, I've been saying it for so many years. It's so difficult when you get, you know, how you just form a, a word in your head, and mm -hmm. uh, you think you hear it one way, and you think it's that same way for for so long, you and then like I've Pierce just thought Bronson? it's that way. Hmm? <laughs> you mean like Pierce Brosnan? <laughs> yeah. <Bronson>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see, and I had to text you as proper. Pier, what did you call him? Pierce yes, Bron Pierce Bronson. You called him Pierce Bronson. <laughs> I, I'm like, hey, what about Glasgow? Century Euro name. <laughs> I don't care. So I had to text you. I had to text you midstream. I was like, Gary, it's Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> Pierce, I'm not ah, whatever. Uh, but yeah, it's it's like when they um when Gandalf and and uh, the little crew uh, come to the the plains, and you just see that that shot of the plains. I just think it looks so beautiful, and you yeah. do realize that you're in different territory now. They're yeah, I mean, it's, it's so guard. Yeah, the, <laughs> that classic line. Yeah, it's like now well, so many like memes have, have been generated from this that, like, <laughs> now when I see them, I can't separate no. these movies from the memes. <laughs> no, yeah, 
I mean, it's taking the Hobbits to Isengard. To Isengard. (laughs) They did a ton of stuff visually. God. Uh, (laughs) Right? They did a ton of stuff visually that they couldn't, they didn't have time to do in the books. Right? So when, when Gimli, when everybody meets Galadriel, right? And, uh, she sees the the like the pain in his heart from when he walks out of Moria and what he saw there. I mean, it's like really explained more in the book, right? And that's the part where Gimli starts connecting with elves because he wasn't even going to be allowed in. Uh, uh, and when it, actually it's Celeborn who's kind of a dick to him at first too. It's like no, you know, like first they wouldn't want to let him in. Then he's like, oh, what the fuck are you doing here? And uh, and basically, you know, it's Galadriel who goes, hey, you know, it's not his fault. It was the dwarves who, you know, brought, who dug too deep and the Balrog came in, but the Balrog killed them all. So, like, have a little sympathy for him. And because they made it through Moria and Galadriel showed that, like, little, just that little empathy towards him, that's when he, that's when things started getting better between him and Legolas. But uh, they couldn't really show that all in the fucking movie, obviously. And I love how they did it. I love how you just slowly see them starting to get you know to become friends and then you know there's that line later uh, i could do it for a friend you know that's fucking great mm, get on yeah. it's like, oh it's so good i love this, you know character okay. arcs and setup and payoff isn't it great don't over exaggerate it it's just a masterwork like throughout there's so many references we could go through for why their relationship blossomed even as simply as fighting together in amon hen like the three of them do a lot of battle together and you know they they syn- uh, synchronize synergize save each other's lives and stuff. And it's just like, that stuff's just going to matter. That's how it works. The more you mm-hmm. do this, the more... And the, yeah, the, just the Return of the King just summarizing it perfectly. And then that gets put into meme hood as well. Just the uh, standing side by side with a friend. <laughs> yeah. And the arrow yeah. <laughs> going into uh, attacking the orcs. I think that's already been done tonight. A meme with Drinker. What's that? Oh, I'll, I'll go bring it up. <laughs> Because uh, here we go. <laughs> Twenty one yesterday. It was like a dad joke meme, but I liked it. And it's like Aragorn, like he's got flaming bacon, and he's like, "The bacon is lit." <laughs> or the booze. <laughs> <laughs> Went back in time just to stop prohibition. Look at that. I know. No, uh, I've undone so much damage there. Um, but yeah, the, I saw your dog's the, a bit of a lush too. I know, yeah, no more, no more vodka. Uh, it's great because someone just posted like I, I can't understand the dimensions of this dog, <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> it's a greyhound. <laughs> Nothing about them makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, what I, what I love um, about this film is it very quickly establishes because there, there's lots of different groups now. They've all been split up. Uh, the Fellowship. You know, you've got Frodo and Sam trying to make their way into Mordor. They they um, they eventually hook up with Gollum. Um, to become their guide. You know, you've got Merry and Pippin that have been taken prisoner by the orcs and then eventually escape into the forest. You've got Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli um, in pursuit of them. You know, you've got Theoden at uh, at Edoras with, with Wormtongue there. Um, mm-hmm. And then you, you've also got Eomir, who gets exiled because he very clearly sees the influence that Wormtongue has over him. Um, so you've got all these different factions that are they're kind of vying for survival. And you've also got Saruman, who's unleashing the power of Isengard against the Rahirim. Um, he's, so he's damn, there's a lot villain. going on in this movie. But you kind of, you understand it fairly quickly. It's, it's, it's Saruman's movie almost, out of the three. He like commentates on a lot of it, and it cuts to him a lot. And then obviously his main his essential defeat is in this one, rather than in Return of the King. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, hmm. Fantastic fucking performance. Never get tired of listening to Christopher Lee B. Saruman. I mean, his voice is just... It, it's glorious to listen to, you know? But it's, it's yeah. great when Gandalf comes back because clearly both Christopher Lee and Siri McKellen uh, did the lines, these lines, and then they ADR'd them together. So yeah. it's, it's very clever. And, and of course, that works yeah, into this yeah. I am Saruman... Well, yeah, and it's as not he should have been. It's not without reason, right? Like mechanically, he functions the role that Saruman was supposed yes. to function in the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's that's just very cleverly done. And they're blo- both c- classically chained actors, as uh, absolutely a the, like a, a a breed that will be gone forever because they just don't 
do it the way they did it back then. But do you know uh, what else is gone forever? What's black that? elves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that apparently the uh, black elf, black hobbit, black dwarf genocide has already happened many years prior. Oopsies. Uh, but, yeah. No, I, I love that there's definitely exposition in it where you're right. Saruman and Gandalf both like rattle off like, hey, they like I like when he's talking to Aragorn, he's like recapping freaking Frodo for the whole audience. He's like, <laughs> Frodo needs to get the ring. Da, 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 da. It's still great because it's Ian McKellum doing it. So like exposition away, dude. But there's also tons of show in this that you I mean, uh, you have to assume that uh, especially in fellowship, the the amount of time that passed. Uh, between uh, Bilbo leaving the Shire and mm. Frodo leaving the Shire. So Bilbo's like really old. So you could either think, well, once he took the ring off, he just started aging immediately. Or it's been like a long time. They don't really say it. I like that. You have to kind of figure it out. And, I, I you know, that's treating the audience uh, like you have a brain. And you, that's not things you need to really answer all the time. There is a couple of things uh, in the like, uh, yeah, I love how they held out Golem completely like uh for the first film when they could there's scenes they could have shown and they didn't and uh i i love how they did that and they say this one yeah i i think um and i don't know if this was because the the motion capture and the special effects just wasn't quite there yet because there, you get that one shot of him in moria hmm. where he's like climbing up a ladder or something and he's kind of half in shadow and it looks pretty rough like from a a special effects point of view um and it's just fine it's a movie from 20 years ago i can totally deal with that but he's much better when you see him in this one and i don't know if like they they had more of a budget or like um the the technology it's just advanced a little bit because this was all weta workshops that did this and i'm pretty sure they were they were kind of an unproven special effects house at the time and they kind of had to invent a lot of the technology that they ended up using in these movies on the fly you know what they did? They went to Lucasfilm and ripped off a bunch of their stuff. Really? Yeah. <laughs> they got invited to Lucasfilm and like, oh, that's a good idea. And uh, yeah, that's that's exactly what they did. Uh, you know what and, I? You yeah, know what I love though? Um, change between the two movies, though. I think there was it was even what they were filmed on. I, I can't remember for sure. Somebody in the chat can answer, but there was a technology shift between the two movies. Uh, the first right. Movie. Um, I, because I noticed, and it, to a lesser extent in this one, but definitely in the first one, there was a lot of miniature shots with with figures, with CGI figures, kind of composited into it. Like if you get these big panning shots of Isengard, that's yeah. really that's definitely a miniature. But then they put the, the CGI orcs in over on top of it, and it looks it's fine, it's great, and it's just kind of satisfying to see that blend of the two, um, like really detailed, really well crafted model work with with a bit of CGI to enhance it and give it like that, that extra polish. I think that looks great. I think the, I mean, the goblet and uh, the golem special effects really hold up. Uh, they do even, a really good job today. of introducing him and gradually chipping away at who he is, what he is, why he is. And then, uh, honestly, a conversation is pretty underrated. I think in terms of just for Frodo stuff is when Frodo is just talking for a while about trying to save Gollum or what Gollum's fate is, Sam the whole time is like, why do you care about this yeah. guy? This guy's clearly yeah. evil. Fuck this guy. Like it's, it's what, But Frodo takes everything Sam is saying about Gollum as Frodo's future. Mm-hmm. It's really as, as good. he should because but, this yeah. is this is the end point of what he is going to become if he if he succumbs to the ring. Um, and I think, and you, know, you understand like, why he says, I have to believe that he can come back because he has yeah. to believe that he can come back from this as well. Sure. And, and like, I think Sam so, makes a casual comment about that, like that not being the case. And he's just like, what the fuck do you know about it? Like, as, as if to be like, I need to discredit you because fuck, that cannot be my future. What didn't well, make it, it like, from the movie was Frodo was much harsher uh, in the books. And there's a whole scene with him talking to Gandalf. I mean, they mentioned it passingly in the movie, but they, they do it much more. I, I don't know. He's more angry when he says, I hope I wish Bilbo would have just fucking killed him. And uh, Gandalf's all, no, 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 no. That's not good. Uh, Bilbo, you know, stayed his hand. And that's why when he picked up the ring, it uh, when he got when he took possession of it, it was with mercy. And that made all the difference in the world of how the ring treated him afterwards. Uh, but that that's also why, you know, that that shows the empathy of Frodo, even a, a more harsh Frodo from the books 
who just wanted him to die. And now he's with the guy and he's like, now that I do see you, it's like, oh shit. They mentioned that in the movie too, but yeah, yeah. The, yeah, well, the lock. obviously with the, uh, with Smeagol, his first act when he took the ring was to kill someone. Yep. Uh, yeah. To get possession of it. And hence that, that gives the ring, uh, a way into friends. his psyche to just start yeah. to chip away at him. It was much easier for that to happen. Whereas, like you say, Bilbo's first act was one of pity and mercy and kindness, um, and it protected him to some extent from the ring's power. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've I've said this before, and I was I was talking to Voxis about this just as a device. I love the fact that the, the ring is the real antagonist of the movie. Mm-hmm. And it's just this little innocuous gold ring. You know, it can't move by itself. It can't do anything. But it's the power to just expose your deepest weaknesses and your fears and, and just find that thing about you and tempt you and slowly break you down. Um, what and it can take like the most powerful warrior like Boromir and slowly mm. turn him away um, from from the good path. Um, and it, it tests every person that comes within its sight. And I love that. I love how every person is tempted by this thing. Um, it's such a great, it's such a great metaphor for the seduction of power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Even they, Aragorn is. So, you know, every, every, it affects uh, him, yeah. Yeah, it affects Aragorn a bit. Uh, and uh, Gandalf, that great scene in, in Fellowship with Gandalf and the Ring. Uh, when Bilbo uh, drops it on the floor and then he's just sat there by the fire with the pipe and he's just talking about my precious. And, and you know, it's just, oh, oh you just like, when wow. Frodo, when Frodo picks it up, like that's the moment he's doomed. He's yeah. doomed. And then he picks it up. His, his, his life will never be the same. He will yeah. not be able to come back to the Shire. He will be permanently affected like man going to war. And another thing that Tolkien did not intend at all uh, is the power of the ring is uh, with Gollum is a perfect analogy, which he hates, of drug addiction. It's masterful. Uh, and that's why I've always like uh, sympathized with Gollum, you know, being like just trapped in that. And, uh, you know, uh, my first, my first uh, uh, is Rankin Bass Hobbit. They used to show that uh, uh, here in America on ABC, I think it was ABC, uh, like a primetime show. So it's like, it was an animated show showing it like seven o'clock at night. We saw the, the Hobbit. That was my first experience with it. And, and I was very young. I was seven. And I always hated fucking Bilbo because I, 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 I hated what he did to Gollum. You know, I just like I always felt like, you know, Gollum was always screaming for his precious. Like, why did he steal his ring? What a dick. That's all I saw. <laughs> so maybe I've always had a soft spot. <laughs> that's how I saw it as a kid. You know, I didn't understand what else was going on. I just saw this little this pudgy freaking rat looking dude stole his ring. Uh, you know, Frost is the best golem. Hey. <laughs> uh, golem, a little more honorable. As has got his precious there. <laughs> yes. Precious. I know she came <laughs> jumping up on the desk. She's really, she's been really, really needy the last few days. Is she in heat? I don't know. Maybe is she fixed, is she fixed or? Oh, she's fixed. Yeah. Oh, she ain't in heat. Well, maybe she's in ghost heat. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all this pussy chat, honestly. Really? <laughs> oh, no. mm-hmm. on, she'll jump, on, she'll jump on, up onto my shoulder in a minute, and then she'll just want to sit, stay there. On Gollum, by the way, the, uh, the I think this film, if it hadn't already set in, the, that that is the most blatant. Like, this is what the ring does to you. Uh, yeah. For anybody who didn't pick it up from Fellowship, it's like that right there. The, that used to, and the fact that he was like, you know, calls him Smeagol, and he like has moments of. Lucy there's something Lucy. in there, you know. Someone, oh, there's there's some great there. there's some great moments where, um, and I think this movie does it even more than the books did. That kind of almost suggests that uh, you know Smeagol could have reasserted himself and he could have regained some of his identity. Um, and it's only when they they're obliged to betray him, you know, later on mm. with uh, with Faramir, uh, that it breaks that trust and reasserts um, Gollum as the dominant personality. Um, but yeah, like there's um, that that bit where Frodo uses his name for the first time, and you know you, you get that real moment of shock on Gollum's face where he's like, "What did you call me?" Um, mm, and it, it's just like. So good, and yeah. the expressiveness of the the CGI model is just brilliant. You know, you really it conveys all of that emotion of just um, 
it's really know, something credit. he hasn't heard in in decades, even you know centuries, maybe. Mm. You can definitely credit the work they did, but also Andy Circus, I suppose. Andy right? Circus. Yeah. I, I think Andy Circus. I, I know all you guys in the chat and everybody here will agree, but like that, that's another guy. You know, like when when you sit down and you watch a great performance, you know it right away. Like when you watch Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker, or or Heath Ledger as the Joker, or Jack Nicholson, Jared and, Leto. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know when you see a great yeah. performance, you know it. Like you like I'm going to remember this. You know. uh, you know, when the Godfather, there's three of them that are in there that are just like, these are all time performances. I'm going to remember forever. That's one of them. Uh, there, there, there hasn't been a CG actor who gets anywhere near to, maybe Doug Jones uh, before he got into Star Trek Discovery was a really he was a really good expressive actor who can be under tons of makeup or a CG performer. But uh, that, that yeah, that's an all timer right there. That emotion is conveyed through Andy Serkis and it's brilliant. Mm hmm. No, I mean, it's, you know, everything, like the the voice that he's able to do, you know, like, stupid hobbits. <laughs> and, you know, the, the way he can move around, like, you know, jumps around, he kind of gets around on all fours most of the time, like an animal. Um, just all of that stuff comes together into this, this kind of inhuman performance, but you also feel constantly that there's something human lurking deep within, just trying to get out. Um, it's like tragic and horrifying at the same time. It's it's it really conveys just what they were going for in the books on screen. Like I, I don't think they could have done a better job with with Gollum. No, no, and, and there's like true horrors in this book that uh, I mean they really don't even. If you think about like the Nazgul, who we see much later, but like the horror of being maybe a good person who just took a ring, you know, nine thousand years ago or whatever. And slowly your life just faded away until you disappeared. And now you're, you're beat. You have no free will at all. You're, you're just there for Sauron's will. You're just a slave to the guy's will forever for eternity. As far as you know. And again, you could have been a good Numenorian King or, you know, it's, 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 it's hell. I, and I, I've always loved the concept of that. And I've always loved that they didn't really go into it much and that's the best part of this film this whole trilogy you just brought it up the ring is the antagonist we we only see sauron in like flashbacks and i'm really glad that they decided to keep him out at the end of return of the king uh, i think it's a great decision that uh, amazon will will not pick up on at all and give us sauron's origin and his boyfriend and his much smarter <laughs> sister or whatever that they're going to add in possibly another antagonist now so I saw trying the irony is you're correct on absolutely you, all of that. And yeah, like you can just imagine because the nine ring race, like as Aragorn describes, they were once great kings of men, like get mm -hmm. great leaders. Um, I, I guarantee there'll be like toxic males um in the Amazon series who absolutely sure. deserve everything that they get. Um and yeah, but like in, in this, like you say, it, it's kind of up to you whether they were good men or not. Maybe they were just um, innocent people that were seduced by this power that they didn't understand. Um and yeah, one of the bits that always stuck with me is the, the battle on Weathertop where Frodo puts on the ring and he sees them around him and he gets to see their mm. actual form. Um and they're just yeah. these like decayed, withered husks of men, like their faces are all like fucking shriveled and messed up. Um and that's what they actually look like. That's what thousands of years of being under the influence of the ring actually does to a person. And it's horrifying and pitiful at the same time. Uh, I just yeah. thought that was brilliant. It's being seduced by power. Ah. Oh, but uh, yeah, like I love the buildup in this film. Uh, I, I love it when they, you know, when, when they get to, to Rohan, um, that, because this could have got like, think about it. They, they, you know, fellowship works is so tight, and we're introducing all of these new characters. We're making some pretty big changes in this, and they do it almost right away. They go like, "Oh, okay, here's the Rohan story," and uh, we got, you know, uh, Theoden's son, uh, and uh, Amir's searching for him, and they just cut right into it, and it freaking works. Like the editing is so tight in this, right? And uh, yeah. and I, I that's that, I I knew. I mean, when I saw Fellowship, I'm like, that was something special. But can they do this again? And that was the point where I'm like, oh, yeah, this whole thing's going to be freaking great now. Wow. And I love, uh, I, yeah, I love Worm Tongue. You know, how Theoden is like this old kind of crippled man, you know, his 
beard's all fucking scraggly and like you can barely see and everything. Um, and you know the makeup even on Warm Tongue looks great. Like he's really pale and he's always sweating. Mm. <laughs> he's just like really uh, disgusting. Sweaty goth. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sweaty goth of Rohan. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you say, it just it it builds that all that stuff up very if quickly and efficiently. You you know that this king is um, under the influence of his advisor, who clearly has ill intent. You know, Eomir is the only one who really um, sees it for what it is, and he quickly gets banished. Um, and so he's just reduced to. I, I guess the majority of the army goes with him as well, because I, I think they mentioned at one point he's got like two thousand men under his command. So they're they're just like roaming the, the plains just attacking any orcs that they see like just mm -hmm. trying to wage a hit and run kind of war which um, leads them into Mary and Pippin yep mm. um yep. yep and so yeah they they're obviously being transported with the orcs back to Isengard um and it it's just a big protracted chase isn't it like these guys are running for like i think gimli says like 3 days and nights without rest <laughs> like yep. Any human would be dead if they tried that. Now, that's, that's the a... only thing which kind of got me is I can see Aragon and uh, uh, bloody Legolas. Legolas. Legolas, my brain's going dead because I've got a cat stuck on me. Uh, I can see them, you know, you just see them being so swift, but Gimli? Mm. Dwarves are actually like really, they're stronger than regular men, more durable yeah. than regular men. Uh, they don't explain it in the movie, but they are. They, Dor yeah, Dor yeah. In, in the movie, he says we're really good at short distance bursts. Yeah, that's yeah, dwarves are natural sprinters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's Peter Jackson. Yeah, there's uh, there's some book fans in there going, no, I, I, hey, first time I saw Fellowship, I tell the story. I was behind a book fan who fucking hated it. He's like, that's the worst fucking thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, that's the thing. You you can treat that line of dialogue as canon lore about exactly the attributes of dwarves, or you can see it as he's been running for three days straight. He's tired. He's just saying sure. it. he's sure, tired. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. There's a couple things like a couple of things here and there is never what any of us have an issue with. It's when it's shattering, when it's yeah. utterly shattering and un unexplained or done for obvious reasons that do not support the story. Well, one of them. Whatever could um, you be referring to, Gary? I have no yeah. idea. I'm curious what you guys Good think. Um, Aragorn spares Grima, or at least spares Theoden killing him. And yeah. that, not killing Grima, means that he gives the information about the weakness in the wall. Um, not, not just that, now, but he actually gives away the, the, the route that they have to take through the mountains to get yeah, to. He gives it all away to Saruman. Yeah. Um, do you? How do you feel about that? Because I, I think it's a, it's a thing that Aragorn could or couldn't do. Like, I, I really don't think it's. If, if someone said like, should he have done that? Shouldn't he have done that? Is it in character? I'd be like, I feel like neither are more in character, but it is unlucky for the characters yeah. that he decided to do that. I, I did that. Is one of the things that sticks out as like a slight um, flaw in his character in that. You know, a, ga a man as experienced with warfare and pragmatic as Aragorn should have known, okay, he's going to go straight back to Saruman and tell him all the secrets of, of Rohan and fair, what yeah. their plan will be and everything. Yeah. So at the very least, they probably should have just imprisoned him. They should have had Thea didn't do it like they did in the book. So Thea didn't basically uh, gives him a choice. And you could stay and fight for me. Uh, or you can, I mean, like, so... Wormtongue had been like in service for him for a long time, so he he deserved that much at the. But the book, like this, is so different from the book. But it's yeah, it wasn't Aragorn who made oh, that she, decision. It was they had it. I was curious about that because um, I really enjoy him appealing to Grima's like humanity in um, in Return of the King, Theoden, and I was like, yeah. man, this didn't show up at all when he first talk to Grima and I didn't know if that was just a matter of well he's just come out of his you know coma in a sense and he blames the guy he probably trusted so that's why I mean like it was fine in the movie for me because he was mm -hmm. just coming out of this spell that uh you know and and it just I, it worked for time because you would have had them sitting there talking for a little while right they'd have been going back and forth for a little while and then Grima would have left uh and then he ends up running across uh the nazgul and then you know off to isengard so uh but uh yeah they 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 just 
just cut all that out. And they have to. They have to cut some stuff out. We totally yeah. understand. You got your Nazgul pre-order going. I dude, um, my wife uh had a little chat with me because I pre-ordered uh, the rest because I wanted to have nine. <laughs> so I got the balance. <laughs> so I had a nine. Oh, you got all the stormtroopers. I need all the nine. Yeah, and sure. I had three of the nine, so I had to get six. And she's like, what the did you mean to order six nines going? Like, yeah, there are nine, sweetheart. I have to get yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> there were nine. Well, nine. She understood after I said that, and they're cheaper now than buying them. So, like, if you go out and try to get a Nazgul right now, it's a thousand bucks. Wow, yeah. that's brutal. Thank you. Uh, but now you can get them for two hundred, which is a little cheaper. Uh, you know, I've got deposits down. I'm like not throwing all this out at once. Let's not be crazy. But uh. I guess I just had a pipe break in my house. So home ownership. Awesome. It's great, isn't it? Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a little one. It's it's like trickling down the driveway, but it could get worse. Oh, so it's not like in your ceiling or anything. No, no, no. No, you're not too, yeah, not too bad then. Um yeah, I mean, um what I liked as well, because you kind of get a little bit of this um when you see from Mary and Pippin's point of view is that there's a kind of division between the orcs even, between the Urukai and, like, I guess, the regular orcs who are much yeah. smaller. I think it's um, Mordor and Saruman, right? The Mordor and Isengard's forces, they, um, they're um they not quite the same. Thing. Yeah. Because yeah, um, the, the Urukai answer to Saruman, they don't answer to Sauron. Yeah. Because, yeah, like, the <laughs> one of the orcs, one of the, the Mordor orcs wants to fucking eat Merry and Pippin. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, like they their response is just to lop his head off and be like, "Meat's back on the menu, boys!" Oh, and they're just gonna eat fact, him. By the way, they're so busy devouring him that they completely forget about Marion Pippin. Like, <laughs> yeah, Marion Pippin's like getting chased by that other guy again. Who yeah. I'm pretty sure his name is Ugluck, and I only know that because I had the Top Trumps back in the day. Wow, and I guess oh. they. Trump. You get 30 characters, and I guess they actually included him because they were running out of Lord of the Rings characters to put in the yeah. top tracks. I never know the orcs' names. Like They're never That's really bad. mentioned in the movie or anything. I'll never forget Lutz. I think that's a really cool Lutz, Uruk Hai name. Is he, yeah. the, is he the first Uruk Hai that Aragorn fights? He's, yeah, well, he's the one that kills that's Boromir. Yeah. Um, right, yeah, yeah. Lutz yeah. is just a really good name. <laughs> Lutz. That's a great shot when he comes over the the ridge in the woods. I fucking love that whole scene. Amon Hen is so good. Yep. Um, yeah, Boromir just keeps taking arrows and getting back up again. He's like, yeah, fuck you. Yeah. It's like, it's like one of the best hero just moments in movies, him doing it's a, that. It's a hell of a last stand, isn't it? Well, it's just the realization of what he's done. Uh, the realization that the ring got to him. And... Uh, him remembering what he was tasked to do, which is protect, protect Absolutely, the uh, yeah. you know the the hobbits, and uh, yeah, he just becomes baller ending for Boromir. It's oh. the, um, well, isn't it nice that moment like... when the first arrow goes in? I think where he realizes like this is going to cost me my life. Yeah, I'm pretty much done. And then I think he sees, he looks at them, and he's like, "It doesn't fucking matter. Keep going." Yeah, just take as many out as I can. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and it's good because it builds up earlier on the fact that he's probably more attached to Merry and Pippin than the the other hobbits, um, because they get that mm. like little scene where he's teaching them how to fight and stuff, and then they like wrestle him to the ground, and you know he's having a bit of a laugh with them, and it's just like a nice little bonding moment, I suppose. And yeah. so ultimately, he they're the two that he ends up giving his life to protect. Mm. I just thought yeah, it was a nice he, little he, payoff to that. He's the one that takes them across the gap in. Uh... In the, with the, I forget like the part of Moria they're in, but you know the staircases that are all breaking yeah. apart. He grabs mm -hmm. them too and takes them over with him. Yeah, it does seem that he cares for them too quite a bit, and so I'm sure he was more than happy to die for them. Yeah, I mean, he'd probably rather he didn't have to die for them, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, if it means they survive, of course, and that's the really fucking sad part of all of it is he never got to know that they were safe. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, so it's funny as well because the movie thoughts. never ex because Faramir knows that Boromir died, but in the theatrical yes. cut, you don't really get an explanation for how he knows. Like I know from the books, the 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 canoe that they put Boromir in ended up making its way all the way to to 
um, Minas Tirith, and so he sees it. Well, you see it in the extended cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, and, uh, and, which is the one I, I just and, have and to watch the extended cut. Was... Oh yeah, can we tell I'm drinking now? Yeah, fair no, me. don't. Was <laughs> <laughs> it was like you just outed yourself anyway? Just there. <laughs> there was a bit of, in the books, a bit of student, a bit of a student of Gandalf. So, um, there's that. Um, but, Gary, ask Drinker which version he watched. Oh, dude, what version did you watch? You better tell me extended version. It's weird. I don't remember, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Not remember. <laughs> What, okay, did one take three hours or four hours? Yeah, <laughs> it was the three-hour one. Um, oh. Yeah, I was a bit short on time for this for prepping for this, so I watched the theatrical oh. cut again. This is, I honestly, I'm sorry, I didn't watch it because I've been watching them so much because I did like nine videos on Lord of the Rings, so I've been watching them over and over and over and over again, and I just I could sit down and watch them again today. I could throw the popcorn in and watch them all today because I could never get sick of them. But yeah, I didn't watch it. Advance. Well, I'll tell you what, like if, if yeah. we happen to do something like this again for Return of the King, I will prep on the the extended cut. You'll watch the correct version. Yes. <laughs> and then I'll go away and think about what I did. <laughs> yeah. do, you have, do you have the 4K uh, on disc yet? Because they're magnificent. They're really good. Right. No, I don't good have Gary, that, actually. I, I've bought them. I still like I bought them all like half a year ago. Still haven't used them because I don't have a 4K potential yet, but I will in a couple months, I think, so um they're waiting they're just sitting there waiting to be watched <laughs> i have a bunch of stuff to send you i forgot to send. i gotta send it to you i, have a well, I mean don't worry about it man you've been fucking moving <laughs> like, it's all yeah. out of it. i need to get rid of some of the stuff out of my house especially yeah. <laughs> I got a box from as i got a box i sent to as that went on the most fabulous journey it went to like <laughs> And the UK, and then it came back, and I think it went through New York, and then just like came back to my house, you know, because like for some reason, uh, our post service is stupid as fuck. Uh, <laughs> it FedEx. Now. Yeah, I've got, I got a big box for As and a big box for Roller. Dude, yeah. I got a letter in the post from Parcel Force saying we've got a, a a parcel for you here that's that's been sent to your PO box, but we can't deliver it to the PO box, so we need a, another address. So I phoned them up and I said, okay, you know, send it here to this address. And then he went, great, it'll be there tomorrow. Never, it's never, to, it never fucking turn up. They've Damn. never turned up, Parcel Force. Normally, Parcel Force are all right. Yeah, normally ours is okay. I mean, for being DHL, a DHL, great. It's they Hermes that fuck you up. Great. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> now that's, that's an amazing, that's an incredible journey as Hermes. That could go yeah. anywhere and do anything. So. Now FedEx, I'm just gonna send stuff FedEx to you guys from now. Yeah, because I gotta, I gotta pay you for the freight for the Optimus you don't, Prime. You don't, ha you don't have to pay for that. That's yeah, ready to go. That is another thing that's ready to go. I haven't even opened mine. It's sitting in a box right there, and I want to open it so bad. We'll it's do it together. Prime. It's an Optimus Prime that that starts out of the truck, and then you press a button, and it goes doo -doo 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 -doo. automatically <laughs> transforms. It's fucking rad. Yeah. So, and I then you enough. can you can download an app. And the app, if you press like buttons on yeah, the app, yeah. it, will, it will pose the Optimus Prime for yeah, you. It'll do like all kinds of, it's so fucking cool. It's one of the coolest toys ever made. Sorry, Lord of the Rings. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now that you've heard us review every parcel service known to man. <laughs> yes. This Someone was, tra this was a trap okay. just to give our opinions on the postal services in our respective countries. Yeah. Well, we've got Scottish, English, Welsh, American. Yeah. Yeah, pretty well represented. Right? So we've got diversity here. We did yeah, indeed. right here we did it. I'm a Sexism minority. Diversity. We did it in gaming. We did it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Finally, Finally, we saved the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Um, <laughs> or we're, are we still in Rohan? Are we in Rohan? We were yeah, we were talking a little bit. I just wanted to point out as well, like the the point where they um they get intercepted by the riders of Rohan, and Aomir explains to them, yeah, we intercepted those orcs that uh, you were tracking. Um, we killed fucking everything that we could see, and then we burned the bodies. And they're like, oh fuck! So they go and like you know find this just big pile of ash, and Aragorn just loses his shit and boots a helmet across the ground. Apparently, Viggo Viggo Mortensen actually broke his toe doing mm -hmm. that. I <laughs> kept it in the movie. You gotta, 
you got to keep up with the times. The new meme now is that anybody who says that is a loser because everybody always explains it to everyone. <laughs> like, yeah, there a, we go. <laughs> <laughs> is a, I just I find it amusing that that's where it's evolved into. It was a really cool fun fact, but now that everybody has used it as a really cool fun fact, it is now a lame fact. But I think it's cool. Um, I wouldn't want to cool. undersell as well his performance of that scene. He fucking he lets it out, man. He really thinks they fucked up. Yep. Great. I think that he is thinking about Boromir's last words when he does that mm -hmm. as well. Not to mention he is wearing Boromir's greaves at that point. Mm -hmm. He's put them on. Nice. I love this shit in Lord of the Rings. It's so no. good. Oh, the significance of him saying our people at the end. So I get you. <sighs> yeah, and the fact that the first thing he says is they took the little ones. That's the first thing he's got on his mind. It's not yeah. anything else. They took, they took the little and that has changed yeah. from the books. The books, Boromir death is is uh is a bit messed up. Uh, it's more real. It's more real. It, but he it's doesn't kind of off screen, isn't it? It, it, no, it's just, he just he doesn't get to finish anything. He like they don't find out which hobbits are gone, or they don't know if Frodo is taken. They just say he says he got the hobbits, and uh, bam, you know, basically that's what he does. Uh, so they 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 added a little more, and I would say, I mean, improved it a little bit. It's probably sacrilege to say to a lot of Tolkien people, but I like oh, this that scene. Fan braces, I assume, is what they actually are. I don't like you need shad for this. Okay, I don't know. Gauntlets. <laughs> Yeah. I don't actually mm. know what the correct word for him is. Um, someone said van braces. That sounds about right. I'm not sure. Greaves his legs. Yeah, that's because I'm retarded. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this is apparently true as well. Like Viggo Mortensen really got into the the part, and he like kept the sword with him at all times, just so he would be really comfortable carrying it and mm. look pretty confident with it on screen. Um, and it shows, really like, you know, when he's, when he's just, whenever you see him gearing up and, like, you know, putting his dagger in the sheath and, like, gearing up with the sword, yeah, it looks like he's been doing this shit his whole life. Uh, it just, it looks, it looks good. It looks like a guy who, who kind of knows what he's doing with all of this. He stuff. was a fill in. He wasn't even the original Aragorn. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, he came in because of his kid and, like, just killed it. Absolutely killed it. Yeah, when he takes he these swords so from the kid at Helm's Deep and he just like swishes it around really, really quickly, you know, and then he's just like, This is a good sword. It's a shit sword as well. That's the funny yeah, thing. It's, garbage, <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's all like tarnished and yeah. like notched and shit. <laughs> yeah. It's like this thing's gonna shatter the first time you hit someone with it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, just get it sharpened, you'll be fine. He's obviously just trying to like inspire a little bit of like optimism and confidence. But it's just yeah. like, you know, you look at it that it's like, fuck, you know, this this boy. Yeah, boy here. And this him. is one of this is one of the issues I have actually um, with it, and I know we're jumping way ahead, but when it comes to the Battle of Helm's Deep, like the elves never show up for that in the books. It's all Rohan, and oh. they actually have a pretty strong force of soldiers there. Like it's not just like old men and boys. Like mm. they actually have a fair number of soldiers, and they mount a pretty effective defense all by themselves. I mean, I kind of get why they wanted to bring the elves in just so that. There's a there's a connection there between honor and their their old alliances and stuff because in the the books like they very much the elves do take part in the fighting but they're very separate and they they're never really shown oh, on gone. screen. Yeah. Um, it's just explained that yeah they they came under constant assault and they really held their own um, and I see why they wanted to put them in here for this but um, yeah I just felt like it undermined the the people of Rohan a little bit, like it made them seem like they were totally unprepared for all this shit. Um, my criticism's a little different, and I think what you're highlighting could be considered a symptom of what my criticism is, which is this wasn't this comes out of nowhere in both happening, like like any knowledge we have up to that point of it happening, and then everything going forward. These elves get like wiped out significantly with a lot of the Rohan forces. Mm. Nobody really talks about it in the movies. There's not much mention of the sacrifice they made and what like journey they would have had to have made to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even think there's a there's like a line for it um, during yeah, the post battle. And I remember being like, man, those elves deserve like they look what they did for you guys. Like you would have lost without them. Yeah, there, well, apparently there are scenes they were going to put in for some 20th anniversary that they never did. That would have been a nice one, and a funeral for Theoden would have been a nice one. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, it, I mean, it, I still love it. 
but yeah, like it did. They that was just a way in. to put in more elves because they're you know again the elves are leaving. Remember, um, well, you don't have to remember, but uh, this in in the legendarium in the Silmarillion, this like is nowhere near the biggest battle ever fought, the worst battle ever fought, the most destructive battle ever fought. This is like the waning of a world that's changing. And just kind of the last of the magical shit, basically. Uh, and that's that's kind of like what's cool about it, too. They, 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 you've got all this backdrop, this massive thousands of years of just eras and eras have passed by. And uh, and that's that's what helps. Uh, yeah, the elves were just weren't uh, in it that much. <laughs> like other than, yeah. And that they probably felt like, yeah, we need to have some more elves as yeah. Um, I, I did like the the whole conversation with Arwen where um you know the you get to see what will happen to her because she's she's immortal essentially and eventually aragorn is going to grow old and die and she's going to be left um you know behind um just grieving her. for eternity and you get that great montage of her just like yeah. you know the, the the buildings the crumbling around her and like she's walking through the the forest and it's all like all the the leaves have fallen the trees are dead and it's just a it's a great sort of i guess um illustration of how bleak the elves lives are when it comes to just any other species you know because they they will keep going forever whereas everything around them will, will change and, and grow and then die and it's it, it must be such a horrifying existence in some ways because you're just trapped forever in the life that you've you've got i suppose i just love the the again from a cinematography point of view I just uh, I, I love the bit where she's just stood there at the end of his sarcophagus and she's got the mourning veil on and all the the city's just all crumbled it's yeah. all crumbled around and she's just stood there in the in the wind and it's just such an amazing looking shot it really it's so is so bleak isn't it mm. but uh, bleak but incredible at the same time just looks incredible yeah looks like a uh, Elden Ring <laughs> yeah <laughs> you had to bring it into it didn't you <laughs> um it's like moller has to just leave now because he's gonna go play it <laughs> well as did you have you have you finished it now uh no uh because uh, i found a couple of things but uh i don't want to do them without doing them on stream so all right um but yeah, the katana the, the... is sweet now that the arcane scaling is working hey good stuff that's a um, possible future for Arwen in the in the movie. Sure, it's not. Yeah, I, I, yeah. It's, it's Elrond basically saying the life of an elf versus the life of light in here. I don't know. I, no I, I don't way. think so. I I think he's. No, I'm, I'm joking. That he's not. Oh, okay. He, sorry. He's genuinely, <laughs> he's, he's genuinely worried that that'll be the future, yeah. and she should. He, he wants to save his daughter. Yes, and yeah. it and like he does not want her to be with Aragorn. He wants her to go with him. I don't think he says anything that's like untrue necessarily. Um, you it's a reality check, isn't it? For her, yeah. it's like you know, you're you're swept up in this romantic notion of of life with a human, but like this is what will actually happen. You'll you'll have a couple of decades of happiness, then he's going to die, then you're going to be alone forever and miserable, and this is this is your life that you're going to choose. What's the lifespan of a Numenorian? It's it's what about hundred hundred twenty? It's three hundred years, I thought. Because he's, he's, he's Aragorn's eighty-seven. 87 right? well, depends, there's, yeah. there's some that are uh, there's the kings live longer than the regular Numenorians who still live longer than regular humans. It, it's the, it's like how pure their blood, isn't it? Because over time they've been they've been mingled with yeah. lesser men. People uh, are saying roughly uh, around two hundred ish years. Yeah, two hundred and twenty. Arwen were married for one hundred and twenty-two years. Okay, he was already eighty. That's two hundred. Uh, yeah, and then he. In the book, sorry, spoilers, he dies, and then she dies a year later of basically a broken heart. Mm. Yeah. Um, he gave up her, saying, her, her. Yeah, Aragorn lives to be 250 ish. Yeah. Uh, the kings were, lived a little longer, the, the Numenorian kings of Numenor at the time. They're more powerful. They're they're from the elves, so they're they're kind of half elf. And uh the, you know, a lot of them have the same color eyes, like the gray eyes uh of the elves. Um, but they, they don't have immortality. Um, and what, what sucks is like death was considered a gift because not even the elves know where men go after they die. They definitely went somewhere though. 
right? And uh, then it was, you know, it was Morgoth who poisoned him and basically said that no, death is bad and you need to be jealous. And um, that's what that's what started the rift between Numenorians and elves. And uh, yeah, it's it's something that uh, Amazon will completely fuck up. So don't watch it. Sorry. Yeah. Read the books. Um, yeah, I think there's, and I don't know if the the movie touches on this quite as much but like i i guess there's something um noble about the fact that our lives are short and that we learn to make the most of the time that we have whereas elves when when you know you're gonna you can live forever essentially you know it loses its meaning because time just stretches out infinitely for you you know there's no there's no there's no need to live your life to its fullest because you have forever to do whatever you want and and i think that's in a way that's kind of the problem that the elves face is that they lose their sense of purpose because they just continue and eventually life just kind of loses its meaning it loses its uh, its value to them because they they've experienced everything they've seen everything they've done everything mm-hmm. um, kind of funny you um bring that up because i assume that was that accounts for their like odd disposition compared to other characters a lot of the elf characters are very um just careful with their wording, pretty much observant rather than like obnoxious or anything. And I just get the sense that these are old creatures compared to the people around them. Mm. And then direct comparison, you know, like Kang is supposed to be the oldest creature in the universe for the MCU. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck clown, fuck right? Kang. Clown, right? Yeah, exactly. They took you know, the care of the, all the you, elves if... to, to portray them that way. But like, you just don't see that in a lot of stuff these days. Like, my character is 10,000 years old and he's just like Jeff from over the fucking... <laughs> yeah. the, the, the way I, I imagined it is like, if you've, if you've been around for, for thousands of years, you've you've experienced every conversation, you've, ever, you've heard every opinion, you've, you've talked about every possible permutation of everything, and you're kind of just tired. And the, the very act of speaking is almost effort for you. That's why they speak kind of slow and methodical, because it's like... Um, I don't know. It, it's almost like it's hard for them to to summon up the enthusiasm to even do it. That that's the way I interpreted this from the movies uh, and the books, I suppose. It yeah. Well, what Tolkien was trying to figure out later in his life, he was he spent a lot of time trying to figure out like what would it be like to be an immortal mortal being, and he never figured it out. But that that's uh, it. His brother talks about it in a couple. Or his son, I'm sorry, talks about it in a couple of interviews um, where he really tried to figure that out. Like, why? How would they? How would they deal with grief? Uh, and and I think he he does a good job. I mean, like I just said, their elves can be assholes, and they can like they hold grudges. They hold grudges. They have tempers. Uh, not like not as bad as human because they have learned. You know, they've lived thousands of years, so they learn from their mistakes. But they still have attachment to things uh like jewels uh especially when these jewels have the last of the light of the trees and it like which me it's basically like the light of god you know to them and um yeah it's 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 interesting how they're they're and especially with um Celeborn and Galadriel, when they're introduced they're ethereal it's like oh they're glowy <laughs> um and uh, another uh fact that everybody's going to point out is they use like um Christmas lights for the reflection in uh, Galadriel's eyes and Kate Blanchett's eyes to make her look a little more angelic than everybody else. But they they just use normal lights. So like that kind of fucking detail, like isn't thought about anymore in film. It's just not. Um, T- Tolkien didn't have the work ethic of George R. R. Martin. Now, some of you- <laughs> <laughs> one oh. chapter a year, man. One chapter a year. <laughs> three pages a month is all he had to do fucking christ honestly That's too much yeah, what, was he, what was his latest update it's like i've made some progress not as uh, much as last year but some but some uh but i've done a lot of work on other shows i've written other books that i said i wasn't gonna write uh but now i'm writing because to support the show so hbo swoops in after the COVID is over and said we're game of thrones is back on the menu we're doing five shows and George like, well, I don't want it to end like Game of Thrones. So I'm going to be involved because he's kind of a control freak. And George just forgets he's in his 70s. He's not healthy. 
and nobody gives a fuck until you finish wins a winner. What I, I would argue people are just kind of moved on at this point, like really moved on, but there's still some of us who would like to get some closure, you know, but then, you know, when you, when you set out to subvert the tropes of Tolkien, you know, I mean, one of those tropes is ending your books. So you got us there. You got us, buddy. <laughs> got uh, uh, read. If you want to see a, a good subverted, Tolkien it's it's an old book a lot of you have probably read it out there I'm like way late to this party Elric Ooh, that's the shit it is good Elric of Mel Nibone. it's fucking awesome <laughs> wonderful all stuff. right loving the shit I think I was streaming something and someone said like Gary's ranting about George R. R. Martin and you're not even there and I was like wait what is he ranting about him for <laughs> what's happened and they're like new blog post I was like oh it can't be that but Oh wow! <laughs> it's bad. No, he he is all but essentially says, "I'm not finishing wins a winner." Go That's away. What <laughs> Basically, Go away alone. Yeah, just just hire a fucking ghostwriter, man. Just let mm -hmm. someone else do it for you. you Same thing with D and D when they like didn't care anymore. It's like, can you get someone who does, please? Yeah, uh, what's that? What's the guy who finished uh, Wheel of Time? Brendan Sanderson. I'm probably mispronouncing his first name. Just had a Kickstarter. I think he raised thirty million dollars on his. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he do it. Obviously, he can write fast. He ended the series pretty satisfying, I guess, to a lot of Wheel Time fans. Let him do it. Fuck yeah, let him finish Game yeah. of Thrones. Fuck it. Yeah. Um. Who cares? I mean, at this point, there's, yeah, there's a little, yeah, there's a little bit there. Me Thank caring, you, but yeah, that's fair. Oh, Elric of Mel Nimbo Day. Mel, I can't. I, guess I have such a hard. It's Mel Nimbo Day. Mel Nib, I, I say it like I have a stuffed nose. Sorry. Um, Don't worry, I've got a, I've got a room. Like three Imran years. Problem. Uh, I had to hear the audio book. Yeah. Yeah. What, what is it you call them as? It's the Ramirim or something. It's the because it's I always saw an M in the middle, so it's Rohim Rim instead of just Rohim Rim. I just saw an extra M in the middle there. <laughs> so I've just always called them Rohim. Well, they, they've got they've got a bunch of different names because they're like or Air Lingas as well, aren't they? So, Cunny Lingus. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I was gonna I was gonna talk as well because um, I I think out of all the battles in the series, Helm's Deep is probably my favorite. Um, I think they do a great job of um, first establishing the geography of the situation. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's this fortress at the head of a valley. There's only one way you can approach it. Um, you get to see the layout of the fortress. You know, you've got the big wall that covers the valley. You've got the citadel and there's like a, the, the, the great hall at the center of it all. And you can tell like, this is going to be one of those situations where they get pushed back and pushed back and they have to keep falling back by degrees. Um, and it's great because the movie, um, it, it just, it really captures that essence of like, you're, you're, fighting against an overwhelming enemy it's like you're trying to hold back a rising tide um, and that's what you've got you know you you try to hold the wall it gets blasted open you fall back to the the citadel they smash through the gates of that after a, a long fight um, then finally all you've got left is the the hall where they make their last stand and they ride out on the their horses to to you know take the fight to their enemies um, and I just think it, it's great the way it plays out, like just showing them getting pushed back and pushed back until there's barely anyone left. I mean, yeah, it's a, uh, I, I'm not sure which I'd say is my favorite, um, but Helm's Deep is like famous for just being one of the best movie fights ever for like castle defense, I guess. I love um, the, like, as you see the, the orc army coming up the valley, and you know it's just like a sea of torches that they're carrying, mm. and like yeah. occasionally you get this lightning flash where the, the whole the whole army is revealed to you, and it's like ten thousand of these fucking things. It's just a sea of spears marching forward. Um, and I loved as well, and th they really captured this from the books, like Tolkien's hatred of of industrialization and machinery yeah. and everything because when they're marching they're all in lockstep and it's like the pounding of a machine like <laughs> it's um it's just brilliant to watch like they captured all of that perfectly in the movie but even though becomes... it's just sorry go on go on i was just gonna say that idea becomes very clear in this one i think treebeard has like a whole rant about yeah, that's machines I mean. destroying nature basically yeah uh, 
Yeah, and of course, should. Saruman's every scene is basically like, burn it all. <laughs> yeah. Burn it into weapons. Just yeah, well, he even it. says, like, the old world will burn in the wheels of industry. Yeah, yeah. 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 The forest of Fingor sits at our doorstep. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's the that's the conflict, and it, it it's reflected in everything uh, of this this enemy that they face. Like all of the orc armor, it's all just mass produced, industrial, brutal, um, like plain, unadorned stuff. You know, just yeah. slapped together plate armor, black. You know, everything looks identical. The Rahirim, it, it's all like ornately. Um, decorated it's like, like a crafted, huge amount of almost, care right. and love has gone into all of it and it's that that clash of of old and new um brilliantly i think just represented in every little detail of the movie mm-hmm. agreed and the rohirrim represent england that's that's what the man said that's what it's uh that's what it represents england before uh 1066 right when you guys got conquered by uh a bit misogynistic, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, <laughs> it was—it was, it was uh, a fiery was, but mostly peaceful takeover. It was, uh, yeah, Gary. <laughs> oh, did you hear? John Cleese was like just uh, about an hour and a half away from me in Austin, I think, South by Southwest, and uh, he, for a joke, said he demands reparations from the Italian and the French for <laughs> consistently enslaving the English, and <laughs> it, it took his freaking mic away from him. What? <laughs> really? From John, Cle- can you imagine somebody taking the mic away from John Lennon? Like, fuck, that is crazy. At South by Southwest, John Cleese is based, man. Fuck yeah, and that was awesome. The thing <laughs> is, if John Cleese deigns to speak in your presence, then you're you're advised to shut the fuck up and listen to what the man has to say. Yeah, you do not interrupt yeah. him and you do not take his mic. That's so many fucking interesting and funny things to say, and he's not even got like the lo- the lot of time left on this planet. Can you please let him talk as much as he wants? Yeah, yeah. especially when he talks 80, common sense. Yeah, when you hit eighty, I mean, you just deserve it. You deserve to be listened to. Uh, and I don't care what your politics were. It's like you have a different perspective. Um, there's a great interview with Ian McKellum on BBC Two. Uh, it's all you have to do is um, you know, go. You have your iPlayer. Uh, and I love again how honest you British people are. Also, I have to, I just get a VPN and say, "Yes, I've got a." I've got a <laughs> I'm British. <laughs> yes. And then you go, <laughs> uh, and yeah, there's a good hour long interview with the guy. You know, and he talks I'm about from Glasgow. <laughs> from Glasgow, I'm from I'm in Glasgow. Yeah, <laughs> Scottish dude. Uh, and, okay, bro, and uh, yeah, it's a good interview. <laughs> okay, <too>. bro. <laughs> Because it broke. Totally for like Glasgow, dude. I'm like, yeah, Glasgow, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what were we even talking about? I don't, I don't know. know. Like, <laughs> gone on a fucking mad tangent. John Cleese. Yeah, John. Well, his, right. his interview on BBC Two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Ian McKellen's interview on BBC Two. Repar- yeah, yeah. We talk about reparations, which was, you know, the reason this whole story is written is because you guys were conquered so no, damn. Well. This just the way. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we're a well, we, we got tired of it, and we decided we'd start conquering the rest of the world instead. So mm-hmm. you know, yeah, everyone got it's, upset it's, by it's that. Some roundabouts, you know. Forward. You paid it forward. You really did. Yeah, it it's like it's it's okay when the French did it to us, but you know, we we make an empire, and oh, suddenly it's a problem. <laughs> yeah, right. right. You know, why does nobody problem. nobody brings up the Romans? Fucking no, no. Oh, well, nobody brings up South America when it comes to the slave. The trade. thing is, I I can claim oppression points because I'm Scottish and we've been consistently butt fucked by the English. Like you know, we we just deal with it, man. We can all agree, no one <laughs> likes the English. There we go. <laughs> now you just butt fucking yourselves. Yeah, <laughs> we keep yeah. electing Nicola Sturgeon, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of those two ended dildos, and you're just sticking them again. <laughs> <laughs> back it up on each other. <laughs> Harder. Well, that's a biting political commentary. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you get it right here, folks. Uh, uh, Nick, Jesus. Nick, uh, Nick in the chat is right. Nobody reads or learns from history anymore. Uh, yeah, it's true. Yeah. That's true. I think that might be changing, though. I think that might be changing with the Gen Z. Uh, a little bit. 
like, uh, well, you know, I, I watch through my kids, right? So my kids are uh, very curious people and know a lot about history and they found it on their own, which is brilliant. So hopefully there's more kids out there doing that. Yeah, nice. We nice. Did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wait, what the hell were we talking about? There was a Lord of the Rings, Two Towers. Oh, uh, yeah, that was it. Greatest, <laughs> one of the, I mean, like, greatest trilogy ever made. Uh, of course, I even its imperfections are perfect to me. Uh, I can watch it over and over. The sign of greatness is when you can just fire something up once a year, twice a year, three times a year, and just never get tired of it. It's like uh, Godfather 1 and 2. If I start watching it, I have to watch it all the way through. If I hit, if I watch any piece of Lord of the Rings, I have to start at the beginning and watch it all the way through. And I'm, no matter what I'm doing. You watch Godfather 3? I don't like Godfather. <laughs> I don't watch it. It ends, <laughs> anyone? Two. it ends at Godfather 2. Yeah. I really uh, like the cut where they put everything in order, though. I thought that was pretty cool. Hmm. In chronological order. It's, 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 uh, I forgot what the cut was called, but it's pretty cool. They did it on uh, AMC. Um, I was going to ask as well. Um, yeah, there's when we were talking about like the, the, you know, the visuals, the special effects and stuff, generally it's pretty solid. There, there's, one little shot that always stuck out for me, and it's like when Frodo and Sam have approached the Black Gate, and it's uh, it's opening up so they can let a bunch of troops in from the south. Um, I think it's the the Har Haradim, isn't it? Um, yes. Which are actually people with dark skin in Lord of the Rings, with their yes. own distinct culture and heritage and history uh, that you could do well to explore if you were no. to do a series about this kind of thing. Oh no, it's it's and such Faramir a shame they never thought to do that. Laments, he laments the dead soldier as well. Um, Faramir, that's, yeah. that's when when Faramir is ambushed, when they ambush the uh, when they ambush them, and he he just the dead soldier that falls by. Uh, Frodo and uh, Sam, yeah. and then he talks about, you know, who is he? Where did he come from? You know, was he truly evil? What was his life? So he was, it was, you know, there, it was a nice distinction that things aren't black and white. The, this the is, um, this is touched upon a little bit in the movies. Um, the books give you a little bit more context for it, but um, yeah, this idea that it's not just armies of orcs that that Sauron uses, you know, mm -hmm. he um, strikes deals with with countries that are aggrieved by Gondor, um, and even Saruman does it with these like um, they, they're portrayed almost as like uh, cavemen, but they're like hill people basically, where they've been driven out of their homes by the Rahirim, and so he uses them to like just you know rape and pillage, you know, just go at it, fucking kill everything that you see. Um, that's fine by me. But it's it's this idea that you can you can sway people to your cause, but with false promises, I suppose. Mm. Because I'm sure, like once he got them on board, um, he would eventually, you know, and he conquered Middle Earth. He would dispose of them as like you would do with everyone else. Um. <laughs> 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 You only watch the three-hour version. Oh my god! You barely you scratched the know. surface. Yeah, was you, you Batman have. was two hours forty-five minutes, and people were complaining. Uh, yeah. by the way, I haven't seen it again. I, I just, I'm not going to. Wait, haven't seen what? The Batman again. I said I was oh. going to see it again, and oh. I, was, I just, it's, I, I'm kind of over it. I'm like, yeah, I don't need to see it again. I don't need to. I mean, it's it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It just doesn't feel like an elephant just entered the room of like you're not allowed. To Sorry. Say that. Uh oh. <laughs> I say the Batman is just fine. It's just fine. Yeah. It's just fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on chat. See if they can load or if they chill with that. I don't know. You have to have sex, and you go. It was fine. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's like fucking an ugly girl that doesn't put much effort in. It's like, oh, it's, it's all right. It's like, <laughs> you want to stay the night? Nah, I'll get a taxi. Nah, I'm all right. I'll just, yeah. <laughs> I'll walk home. <laughs> you want me to stay over? No. Don't want to see you in the morning. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I need the bed for myself, you see. That's yeah. it. It's just a thing. It's just a thing. That really? But if uh, you could no, pay for your own like, taxi back, that'd be great. I, I tell you what, though, man, I would I would watch the Batman over anything that Marvel's put out in the past couple of years, yep. apart from maybe um, no, no, <laughs> that, was, that, that wasn't that, that, that wasn't Marvel. That was, was, that was fucking I mean, Sony. I'd watch the two towers all day, every day above the over Batman. all of it, over Spider Man No Way Home, the Batman, everything. I'd watch it. Even compare yeah. Lord of the Rings gets a pass of being better than everything. Okay, I just want to watch Return of the King now. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll get there. No, I mean, I mean, no, I mean, right now though. I just. All right. Do you want to? Do you want to drop off? (laughs) Just start watching it. (laughs) He's gonna start playing Elden Ring. Don't believe that crap. (laughs) You know, it's it's somewhat the Elden Ring. That's what he's gonna be. Yeah, you can multitask. You can watch one and and play the other. You know. They said, uh, um, "Don't tell Gary as for for God's sake." But Elden Ring stories, the the George R R Martin story that he's so desperately wanted. Is it? Ah, it's, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, that no, he's his picture is being associate like uh, they did a big write up on and deadline and like he's apparently he did work on it quite a bit. I didn't notice the difference with this and Dark Souls, like in terms of story stuff. I didn't notice his 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 hand was in there at all, but sure, if it was. I mean, oh, anything to avoid was... writing that fucking book, just mm. you know. I'm pretty sure I could get him around here to just do a talk in my house to an audience of me, and he would do that, that rather than work on Windsor Winter. This is true. Yeah, I think um, it's just a there's a disinterest now. I, I, I was going to say, right, rigid. when when we talked earlier a little bit about um, the Battle of Helm's Deep, I do I love it as as probably my favorite battle of the 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 trilogy. Uh, but as someone pointed out in the chat, they use movie tactics. When it comes to the battle itself, like <gasps> when the orcs are approaching, um, and Aragorn's like just constantly saying, "Hold, hold your fire," and it's like they're clearly well within range of your yes. of your arrows, <laughs> and they are filling your view. You're not going to miss. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> you should really just open fire at maximum range and just keep hitting them for as long as possible because you're only going to be able to do that for so long. You know, once they get onto the walls, that's it. You're going to be fighting hand to hand. So you should just really make the most of those archers while you've got them. And it's like one dude who just like accidentally loses an arrow and kills an orc. And everyone's like, oh, shit, you didn't just do that, did you? It's like, that's what you're fucking here for. You're here to kill things. (laughs) The orcs immediately put sanctions on Helm's Deep. Yeah. I think think you're absolutely right. Change their flag to Rohan. I think it's weird uh, that we don't it's just see them open fire straight away. away. Yeah. There's like this, this almost this sense of civility with this war. It's like, dude, they're like a rabble of fucking angry assholes that are here to simply to kill you. Like you don't need to treat them like you know, like they're Gondor here to maybe you know offer a surrender or something. It's like no, they're here to just pillage. Like you gotta, you gotta get them out of there straight away. Stop firing. Yeah, um, Aragorn even says that he's like, show no mercy, for you shall receive none. That, that that sums it up perfectly. Like there ain't going to be any surrender here. Like you're literally going to fight to the last man and then get massacred. So just you should really try and do as much damage as you re- as you possibly can right off the bat. Um. Yeah. So that that, that kind of yeah, it it felt a bit weird. Like they they should have really exploited their resources as best they could. But you know, it's um it's movie tactics, I suppose. I did like the movie tactics. I I see it more as they wanted to show like the the gray beards, uh, the old men. You know, whether it's smart or not, that was just to show like this is what we're up against. We got like some pretty. We got five or six badass guys. We got some elves, and then we got a bunch of green boys and old men. Yeah, okay. remember that recently there was a super fans, a Lord of the Rings super fans. Uh, interview where they had just seen the trailer for Rings of Power. I remember and, uh, it well as those were definitely I, super fans. They were super fans, and and one of those super fans was a girl who uh, is blind in one eye. In actual fact, false eye. And uh, if you go to her Instagram, she she's got pictures. She takes pictures all the time with. She's taking the eye out, so you just see, you know. Oh, great! Oh, uh, cool! That's fucking awesome. 
And well, so uh, she, she just got like a big hole in her head. You tricks yeah. with it? Was she like, and uh, she <laughs> said, "Yeah, like uh, you drink shots out of it or something." Yeah. <laughs> she uh, she she always felt non-represented with her disability, uh, and then she added a queerness. Jesus, I mean, look, no no walks are going to be going around with fucking trans flags, darling. There but, was um, love her ass is building up to this. You literally <laughs> had, I know. I, I'm a storyteller, darling. I, you I know. Know. I'm caught I'm a, up. I'm a thespian, darling. And so uh, you you're have this... stroking your cat while doing it. <laughs> Very <laughs> Doctor like, Evilly. He's like, he's like Doctor <laughs> yeah. Evil. Yeah, just like, so he's like a super villain. We meet um, again, Mister Bond. And they just have that one guy with the <laughs> with the exact same eye that she has out. Uh, when when they arrive at Helm's Deep, and it's just like, wait a minute, that that's the exact, technically, that's the exact disability that you no, have. As as was he queer just, though? That's well, what yeah, I want to know. Was he queer? Was he gender he queer? Did, he did. We'll he never did, know. <laughs> no. He did have a, a support Ukraine T-shirt. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's and, a, couple uh, a couple of orcs with her disability, and worse. And, and they're, worse, and, and they're like they're melted, you know, and they're limping, and they're not asking for any help. I'm just it, confused as to how this super fan missed that. It's almost like they 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 just read a Wikipedia article about <laughs> Lord of the Rings and just yeah, you know, they formed their no, opinions from that. That's... It's yeah. it's, it's yeah. as if Amazon just looked at their social media uh, numbers and just went, "They'll do." Yeah, <laughs> you know, okay, what, what their numbers though? But their numbers aren't even that good. I mean, that like one of them has a pretty massive TikTok following, but like everywhere else, it's just. Nah. I think it's a case of picking people that are safe, just nice, yeah. safe people that will say exactly what we want and just yeah, just bring them in. We're safe. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're totally safe. We're totally. Could safe. you imagine if they brought us fucking four idiots in to to do this? Oh, it's like, God. so what did you think about the, the trailer oh, for Rings of Power? We it's should do like our super fan shite. <laughs> What's up with fucking... What the hell are you starting now? <laughs> why is the Black Elf got a perfect haircut in Middle Earth? What, why? why is, why is what Galadriel stabbing a mountain? <laughs> As if you've up. never stabbed a mountain. Yeah, <laughs> I've punched one a few times. Like, I get to the top and it's like, I fuck you. Yeah, I've broken I've, so many bones. I've looked at one and never considered climbing it. It's probably the sensible option, to yeah. be fair. It's it's not as it's not as magical as you think when you get to the top. You're just like, yeah, I'm tired now. I guess we should go down. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. off we go. And that sounds like no fun at all. It, does. Yeah. <laughs> it was. I remember when I climbed Ben Nevis in Scotland. Right, it's um, it's it's the highest mountain that we got, and it's probably mm. in American terms, it's not even that high. But if you get the right sort of weather, you're above the clouds when you get to the top. So you're, you're standing on like a, a cliff and you can look down and the, the clouds will be rolling by like a few hundred feet below you. And it's a really weird sight. Never get, never experienced anything quite like that before. Oh, you get that in Northern California on the cliff. You can be riding on a road. It's near a place called Big Sur, right? So that happens all the time. It's like the fog, but it's clouds. But you're on a road on a cliff driving above and all you see is clouds everywhere it's so cool yeah instead of, instead uh, of clouds it's, instead of clouds it's, it's pollution but it's the same thing that's la um yeah. oh and it's getting bad there uh but uh how high do mountains get in scotland at six thousand seven thousand eight that ten thousand oh you're fucking having a laugh mate no um like ben nevis will be like four thousand i think oh, okay okay yeah that's cute uh, well i'll tell you um it's uh Feet. Oh, well, we deal in meters here, <laughs> so it's one thousand three hundred forty-five meters, whatever that is. In feet. yeah, it's four four and a half thousand feet. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. it's uh, it's a small hill in American terms, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> it, it, it'll fucking tire you out getting to the top of it. Let me tell you. <laughs> um, there's there's cliffs in California in uh, Yosemite, three thousand feet sheer cliff. It's straight down, just three thousand nice. feet. They're awesome though. Uh, it's kind of like uh going uh up um to Moria, yeah. Uh, but but the well, I did. I did have an experience. I'm alive. Do you know? No, I I I was I was in Yosemite for an earthquake, so I saw one of those cliffs like collapse. Um, 
Oh shit. Oh yeah, no, that was the worst earthquake I've ever been in. Um I, I the first time I, I ever climbed Ben Nevis, I was hung over as fuck. Um because it's really it's far away from where I live, so you have to kind of stay overnight, camp out and then like climb it in the morning. So we, we went out in the town nearby, which is called Fort William, and just hit the hit the bars there. Um woke up the next day like no idea where we were or anything and it was like oh shit we have to climb this mountain today and i the last 500 feet like i was like frodo when he when he gets to like near the top of mount doom and he's fucking crawling up <laughs> it's like Did you have a i was i was this close to throwing up I was, i've never oh. felt so fucking destroyed in my life you're all sam <laughs> yeah, I needed I needed a mate who was like, "Oh, I can't carry this burden for you, but I can carry you," and just fucking gets me over his shoulder. Drinker's <laughs> like my bottle, and he's like, "I got it." And uh, yeah, I just like throw it, like spew hanging out the whole way. <laughs> you buddy hell, guy, no Army's gardener. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that was a great line. Uh, what are you? His bodyguard yeah. is gardener. Yeah. <laughs> the chat mentions the dead marshes scene. I love the dead marshes. That was mm. great. Yeah good they did a great job of getting that out of the book it, it's uh it's really eerie you know they're walking through it and you just see these faces just beneath the surface of the water and it's not until frodo falls into it that like yeah that they're, they're, they're these like decayed fucking skeletons like coming out for him or like reaching out for him that's great really well done yeah um, so spooky it's very yeah. spooky. But, but a bit of spooktacular stuff but that's just something you know he took from World War One. You absolutely know, like he was probably oh, yeah. through some marsh, and there was just fucking dead dudes. Everywhere. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, and, and I love the you know the flames and and the bodies aren't really there. Um, yeah. But they'll take it down there. They'll take it down. Yeah. yeah really cool. Well, the the books kind of uh, talk about this a little bit because it's Gollum who explains like you can't. Um, yeah you can't go after them you'll never be able to reach them and you, like you can't try and um take the little candles that they've got yeah. and frodo's like yeah i, I know I'm, i know the reason you went after those lights like implying he was going to try and eat them or something like just, that's how fucking depraved he is oh he eats children yeah he's nasty yeah he's not not a good guy is Gollum. Yeah. No. not a good guy no um there's, but, yeah uh, yeah yeah, they skipped that part of the yes, Go Gollum eats children. But I, I love this the the scene where um you know Gollum's essentially having an argument with himself. You know, he's he's um he, the camera keeps switching different perspectives and it's like the Smeagol part of his psyche is trying to reassert itself and and you know um take control away from Gollum. But then Gollum's like like it's saying to him, you know, I'm the reason that we survived as long as we did. It's like I had to be there. To, to keep us alive through all the, the yeah. horrible um, shit that we've been through. Um, and like, you need me. And so it's, it's a great like split personality kind of uh, exploration, I suppose, where, where Smeagol tries to reassert himself and tell him to go away or never come back. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think it's, it's really cool. It's, it's well performed by Andy Serkis. Yeah. Mm. It's just really, really good stuff. And it sets up like right before it just gets even more tragic, you know, and uh, that's that's what's messed up and great about the story. And it, and it's such a, you know, and the, yeah, that second personality is the ring is the influence of the ring on him, mm -hmm. the ring finding a way to survive. Uh, and that's how the ring has influence over things. And it can, uh, you know, give you impulses to do crazy shit so it can get to a, from point A to point point B, um, it gives you like this yearn to travel. Uh, Frodo starts feeling the same thing that uh, Bilbo starts feeling over time in the books. But uh, yeah, it's it's really cool how, how they represent that and how they did it in the movie without over explaining too much. I felt I that's you know uh, a when I watched it, I think it had been what six years since I read the book seven since I read the book uh, and I totally knew what was going on. Uh, and, and uh, Melissa who didn't read the book at the time, she too, totally knew what was going on. And uh, it, that's, that's the best part is the, the, the appeal. Okay. Let me tell you a little story about two towers. 
Uh, before there was uh, fucking iTunes or anything, I got a I got a press disc. Uh, my wife's cousin uh, was kind of connected, so she got me a, a screener copy of Two Towers, like way before it came out on DVD, and we were flying. And I had my laptop, so I'm sitting there watching Two Towers in the plane, minding my own business. I get a tap on the shoulder from a mom, and she's like, "Do you mind if my son sits next to you?" just to watch the movie. I'm all sure I'll split an earphone with them. So I split an earphone with this kid and we watched the movie. When we get done watching the stewardess and mom and dad and <laughs> looking over the seat, we're all watching this fucking movie. And they like that. You know, I had, I luckily I had the, the closed caption on there so they could like read what was going on, but sure. they couldn't hear it. And they sat there the whole time watching. That's how fucking good this movie is. Yep. Uh, and how much peel it had. Uh, that, that, I thought that was, you know, just complete strangers. That's why this, you know, fandom kind of brings people together. Good shit brings people together like this. That's why we want to preserve it, you know, for stuff like that. I mean, it's just, there, there's not many people you would talk to and they would say, yeah, that Lord of the Rings trilogy is fucking garbage, man. I couldn't stand mm -hmm. it. You know, it, it's just, it's so great to, you know, even here tonight, we've got people from all different parts of the country, parts of the world, and we're just, loving this film like talking about how much it, it made us happy the impact it had on us it's uh it's great that's the that's the power of what movies can do when they're done well mm -hmm. definitely um, just i was gonna ask yeah um yeah the, the the one thing we we didn't really talk about much was the ants um mm. like i i again i think this is one of those moments where if it had been handled badly, I think it would have turned a lot of people off who didn't, again, yeah. who didn't read the books and who weren't familiar with it, because there would have been a bit of, uh, what the fuck is this? Like, why are there trees walking around that can talk to us? Um, but again, I think they, they handled it just right. Um, and they, they brought that element in as well as they could, I think, into a movie. Like, the, the Ents you get a sense of what they are and how they how they think and how slow they are and um yeah i think it, it probably is quite well handled it could have been a total disaster it, it, i mean like i'm a book fan so i'd have loved it but like your normie's gonna go what the fuck and yeah. and what uh, one of my friends just it, he couldn't get over it we'd fight over it all the time uh john reese davies voicing tree beard mm, and yeah. Emily. It never yeah. bothered me at all. I like, I don't care. But it was a good fit. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. Never like he, he didn't really to try to do a different thing. accent or anything. It's like, yeah, just yeah. Gimli's voice again. <laughs> it sounds like Sala. It, they all sound like Sala to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Belloc. His name's Belloc. Belloc. <laughs> <laughs> The thing I love about Salah the most is he, he he keeps breaking out into like the score from HMS Pinafore for, for no reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> John Reese Davies is great. He played Kingpin once too in a Marvel oh. TV show, Trial okay. of the Incredible Hulk. That's right. With uh, yeah, guy's been around forever, uh, and he's great. And I, no, that didn't bother me. I'm like, yeah, it's it's Gimli's voice. So what? You know what? Look at look at this movie. They probably ran out of money or whatever. Uh, don't care, don't yeah. care. Uh, and I thought that they were put in lightly enough, and it and it and it was cool to see a creature from the elder days. You know, something from the elder days when you get a little bit of an idea, like what Middle Earth used to be before even men were running around. You know, and and or or in great numbers, and it was fucking cool. And it could have been, it could have been terrible. Well, this terrible. is something that Tolkien touched on quite a bit, wasn't it? In the books, where it's like the even something like Sauron, as old as he is, like he's he's very much like a a new addition to to Middle Earth. Like the, this world has been around long before he was here, um, and long before he existed. Um, there, there's creatures that that existed long before. Um, any of the concerns of men and elves and stuff um, even were thought of. Um, Sauron you know, was but, like in spirit form around in the beginning, but like not on Middle Earth, no. And then he, he, you know, later on. He, yeah, because he he was originally a servant of Morgoth, wasn't he? Yep. Like Morgoth was his uh, was his leader or his uh, mentor. 
and then Sauron eventually rose to prominence to replace him. So even he came from somewhere. <coughs> yeah, and uh, and and uh, Sauron was um, uh, a pussycat compared to Melkor or Morgoth. Pussycat. Read the Silmarillion if you haven't. It. It's pretty cat. fucking cool. You got a pussy cat on your shoulder. You do. I know. I yeah, mean, that's what Sauron was compared to. She's just not letting go. <laughs> she's just. <Yeah. laughs> I've moved my hands away. Look, she's just like, no, I ain't going fucking nowhere. Yeah. Okay, we'll keep it. We'll keep it. Gotcha. It's gotcha. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like she is like not letting go there. Yeah. No. Wait. 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 Try standing up. See if it. See if it falls off. Oh, it's going! It's going. going on my shoulder. No, he's just going on my shoulder now. And she'll just start. Uh, she'll just chill out on my shoulder now. See, I'm not. I'm not going to try that with my dog because it would. No, uh, it would kill me. Yeah. <laughs> Look, see, she's just getting comfortable on the shoulder. That's it. But yeah. Um, yeah. I, come I think down, we, and then you can we come could... back up. Oh. Uh oh. Yeah, That's it's me. gone. That, uh, it's going to the... go straight on the keyboard. That's my Adobe update that I always get every day. I don't need to update. Yeah. Uh, it's like every time I log into my computer, it's like Steam has to do an update. Like, why? What are you, what are you updating? Like yeah, what are you doing, Steam? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> like checking for updates. It's like, why? Just, you know, just push updates. You don't have to, you don't have to check every single day for them every time I switch my computer on. Fucking hell. Um, but yeah, Two Towers, quite a good movie. Yeah, I, I'd say I'd give it five out of ten. You know, it's middling, middling. <laughs> okay, you know, I I'd watch that. it if I were like you know free for an hour or so. I wouldn't watch the whole thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, the build up to the battle, like people think the whole thing. I, well, I don't know. I'm sure there's some dumb reason probably think that way because of the shortened version. But the battle doesn't happen for a long time. It's mm -hmm. not the entire movie. So much happens in this movie. Yeah uh and all the pieces are put together and and for a middle movie to do what it did and lead into i mean like when i say i like the two towers it's like this much over like anything else and it's not like i watch it instead of something else like 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 as i watch all three of them but if i had a gun to my head it'd be two towers and it's just it was be, it's because of the introduction of the ro the the ramirez the ramirez <laughs> Um, Ramira him, um, Mira him from Bumblo. It's like it's like when you have to sing along to a song that you don't fucking know the words to. It's like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we all went down to the. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just wanted to say before we before we like finished up our our talk about the film. Um, Eowyn. Look, look yeah. uh, there's mm. there's a strong, interesting, well-developed female character. Who knew that it could be done before 2015? The, the, there, you know, Peter Jackson did it in 2002, and it was really well done. Crazy, huh? Uh, amazing, and it was written in 1955. Yep. Yeah. Um, the, but that's but you know we're talking you know all jokes aside. Um, this is a pre-identity politic era, and, and you know the the product is just so much better. It's just so so much better than today. I mean, God, from what I saw Gary post earlier on Twitter today, uh, Star Trek Discovery just brought in a fucking set of space ovaries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for for the latest episode, and then that's my shit. When I saw some that. bloody Democrat, some person who's running. Uh, for office or something is the president of earth of an isolationist uh, earth i don't know if they changed it but like earth was isolationist had force fields around it and didn't want anybody fucking with them oh christ earth fucking i can get down with. Show. yeah but it's it's i think the messaging's all slant slanty because they're just like look at look at how progressive our show is with all the the black females running stuff and the representation and no straight white men anywhere in sight and he's just like wait a minute the federation's fucked earth is an isolationist uh you know we can't travel anywhere because some retarded fucking alien blew up the dilithium uh and it's just like and this is this is your progressive future no wonder it's fucked 
This is San Francisco Brit large, you know. Why don't we have any dilithium? It's it's Putin's fault. Some, it's some... No, I... <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, but the dilithium blew up two years before this. Uh, it's still his fault. Putin. 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 <laughs> space Putin. Sorry, yeah, space Putin. Space Putin. Yeah, giant space vagina floating out there. There's three of them, actually. Look at the little ovaries. Oh, no. Canal. Triple space vagina. You guys yeah. hate Worst ovaries now? Gosh. Um, space over. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm chilling with ovaries, I guess. Omnipotent space ovaries? You draw the line doesn't... of space ovaries. That's fair. I do. I do. Who would have thought, like, when we were watching TNG in the early nineties, that this oh. is what this is what Star Trek would become? This is this is giant, where it was all leading. Giant flowers in one se- at the end of one season that like attacked. And now we just have straight up giant space vaginas. And oh, the, we the, have the, the giant flowers, by the way, which was stolen from a video game. Oh, totally stolen from what's the game again? It's um, uh, it's um. What's what it, it begins with? It's, it's like two words. Help me. Um, for like force. Come on, help me out here, chat. Um, they, something, something force or force something or. Yeah. No, it's a. It's like I'm not a. It's gamer. not the Mass Effect one. The 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 wiggly it's things are from Mass Effect. Mass Effect. Mass Effect. Uh, they, but, well, yeah, part of it's been stolen from Mass Effect with the um, uh, essentially the Reaper. The Reaper is coming, but the other one is. Uh, Oh, Elite Dangerous or something. Is that what it was? Elite Dangerous is the other one? Oh, that's with the, yeah, space Mass, Effect. Mass Effect. Elite Don't Dangerous. Yeah, Elite Dangerous bullshit. is the one that where they stole the uh, the plants from. And Mass Effect is where they stole everything else from. Yes, pretty much. Yeah. Mass Effect's the other one. And then mm-hmm. the Tardigrade, which they stole from that dude. Um, Tolkien didn't steal anything. He, he just borrowed from some uh, mythology. And then all the other fantasy writers have bought, stolen from him. And then, like, you'll get Michael Moorcock, uh, who did write Elric. And I write, I like Elric, but somebody brought it up in the chat. Dude's a dipshit in real life. So, I mean, just like read his books, don't read his interviews. Um, no, one of those people. <laughs> he, calls, like, calls, he calls Tolkien a fascist. He calls oh, everybody. no. He calls a fascist. And, and, like, you know, he's so trapped in the 60s, you know where he probably had his best acid trips. It's like, bro, everything's flipped so much since, since the last time you paid attention. Uh, but Elric is still very, 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 very good. It's got yeah, like... That's one of those opinions where you're just like, well, it was fun listening to you. Bye. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some Victorian guy is a fascist. A guy who actually fought against the fascists. Yeah. Lost all of his friends to the fascist has some conscious objector dick fuck uh sorry c- critical drinker come out and call him yeah you're fine <laughs> <laughs> like fuck that no 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 you little dumb hippie drop your acid say whatever you fucking want but like yeah tolkien's a fascist shut the fuck up this so, uh yeah is this uh these academics now coming in to, to criticize Tolkien and say like oh. he he wasn't. You should have seen what was on the cutting room floor of of I, I don't know if anybody's watched my video, but I I showed the acceptance speech of the best new writer from the 2020 Worldcon. That was one of many many speeches like that. So somebody receives the Joseph Campbell Award and she starts out by calling Joseph Campbell a fascist. I mm. love it. it's so I just. And 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 one of the people who won the award, like uh, George, mispronounced a couple of names. George got her her first job, and she comes out and she cancels George R. R. Martin. That like this, I, I don't know if any of you guys remember this happening, but yeah, George yeah. announced the names and they tried to cancel him for it two years ago. And oh, because he mispronounced it or something. He mispronounced the name. I mean, which <laughs> I mean, I should be canceled for everything. Yeah, it's like if you've got a stupid fucking name that I've never heard before, yeah, I'm probably going to get it wrong. Yeah. Like, sue me. It's not my fucking fault. I will right? sue you because that's the highest offense. It's worse than I was, uh, like, it's like, I'll I see you in court, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I distinctly remember this because uh, at the time I was uh, in a taxi with, and the, the taxi driver was uh, Indian. And we were just discussing this. I don't know how it came up, but we were just discussing this. 
And he, before he, I even said it, he just said, uh, you know, like my name, I doubt you'd be able to to pronounce my surname because it's not something that you're familiar with with pronouncing. Yeah. Uh, and it's and it's just and I was just like and yeah I know, uh, uh, but it doesn't seem to matter. That doesn't seem to matter to people. I mean, what, what when John Travolta got it fucking wrong and then he did that hideous uh, overcorrection, but all Hollywood's just like, no, oh, isn't he great? Um, and then it's just like, okay, you mispronounced the fucking name. Get over it for fuck's yeah, so sake. Yeah, so Get over it's your fucking fun. name. It's Jeez. a perfect opportunity for some fun too. Like you don't, but instead they turn into this awful thing. Because like we can all have a laugh about like ah yeah, that sounds stupid to people who know how it's pronounced. But it, I can see how it makes it. Because um, funny enough, Rags was like, oh, I'd be vaguely interested in playing Elden Ring after seeing Blade, and I was like, what does Blade have to do with Elden Ring? And he was like, the character in Elden Ring called Blade. No, as you, you, do you know any character called Blade in <laughs> Elden Ring? No. So, oh yeah, we were just like, "What are you talking about?" And he was like, is, uh, "People in chat were like, B L A I D D, Blythe." Oh, I... it's a it's a it's, it's a Welsh pronunciation of that. Like, and Free oh, was it's... like, "That's not said as Blade." It's like, no, it's Blythe. It, wait, wait, it's B L. That's a pretty niche like bit of knowledge right there. It is, and it's <laughs> funny be because like B L A D D, like B- Delta Delta. B L A I D D. B L A I D D. And it's not blood. 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 <laughs> Gary, we're gonna have this phonetic thing again. You know, we're gonna. Have to- yeah, when you spell like names like retards, yeah, you're gonna get, you're gonna or, get like. Or Ramifrim. You are calling out. Are you calling <laughs> the, 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 the French influence on our language uh, retarded? Uh, retardo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm American. I'm glad we both agree on that. Arkansas, if you're going to levy that at us. Arkansas! What the fuck is Poughkeepsie? Poughkeepsie? Poughkeepsie! Poughkeepsie! What the hell is Rahimrin? Rahimno, that's a whole different thing. You're bringing your fucking real horrible in life into this. I think we know why the king is fucked then. <laughs> He's been hit with roofies over yeah, and over just again. Been, just been roofied over and over. Again. <laughs> yeah, just before I finish up our our little chat on this movie, the the point I was just going to make before I nipped off to go for a piss there was um, when I was talking about Eowyn, right, um, and how they they built her up as a, a, a well written character. Um, there's a point in the movie where she's she draws her sword and she's she's practicing with it mm. in the great hall before they head out um, towards uh, Helm's Deep, and she's swinging it around. She's doing her sword practice, and then Aragorn's there and he parries it, and then she, you know, he's like, "Oh, you have some skill with a sword," and then she she kind of doesn't disarm him, but she gets one up on him a little bit. She's able to get the sword up near his throat, um, and she explains like, "Well, the the women of um, the Rahirim, we learn pretty quickly that, you know, you can even if you don't wield a sword, you can still die upon one. Now, mm. it was interesting because if you watch that scene carefully, he's actually got his blade just held slightly to the side, so he could kind of parry her at any moment to defend himself if it came to that. That's the difference between a movie that was made in 2002 versus a movie that was made now because if that was done now, she would have absolutely knocked him on his ass and had the sword right his throat, completely helpless. I could kill you in a heartbeat if I want to. Oh, she would have, and it would have him. fucking ruined him as a character. There would have been a little blood on his neck from. Yeah, have, yeah. this was literally yeah. him saying, "You know, I could, I could absolutely defend myself, but I'm going to give you this one because I know it means something to you." Um, and, and, and I trust you not to you know? like try and actually fucking kill me. I think he's genuinely surprised and impressed in general. Anyway, he's just like, huh? Yeah, you uh, you know the way around. And talk about handling it all and stuff. Like, it's a fucking amazing moment where she stands between Witch King and Theoden. I know that's skipping mm, a movie, yeah. but oh, <clears throat> such a good payoff. Yep. Um, and it, it's great because that fucking like ass clown on Twitter, yeah. I can't even remember what her name is, was like, oh, look at all the fanboys. Imagine how they would react to a scene like this. And it's like, 
No, so, that, that was literally in the books. You know, <laughs> not that you, not that you everyone clapped evidence. at that moment because it was like, yeah, this is fucking awesome because it was totally set up and paid off. I was say, not, not that you guys need the evidence, but it's just like, so you never knew what argument we were making then. Yeah, like, no. Is, so it doesn't matter. No, like, whatever. You never looked no. into the argument, did you? They still don't. They never do. Yeah, yeah. Never do. But yeah, Eowyn, awesome character. Um, she gets her she gets her hero moment. Um, and I, I love the the whole core of her character is that she really wants glory and and a chance to get part of the action. Um, because when Aragorn asks her what she fears the most, her answer is it's it's lifted straight out of the book. It's like I fear a cage, the cage, uh, a cage until like old age and use has gotten me accustomed to it to like do not fear it. death. I do not fear pain. I yeah. fear the so cage. She, she's a person who wants a chance at glory, a chance to live a life and do something remarkable with her life, rather than just, you know, eke out an existence and just live a quiet life. That's not what she wants. And she's very much aware, like, well, I'm not, um, I'm not a man, so I'm not going to be fighting at the vanguard of the army or anything. But I want to do something, and she absolutely gets it. She gets her awesome moment. She gets her payoff. <clears throat> um, and I think that that's great. Like Tolkien fucking understood that oh, yeah. seventy years ago. He understood how to write characters like that. It's a shame we can't do it now. Mm. As a, as fucking progressive and advanced and awesome as we apparently are now, we can't manage to write characters as well as that. And uh, what a great contrast in uh, Return of the King that they all like laugh at the idea of her and Mary fighting. Like Ian was even kind of teasing her about it. But the second he finds her in the battlefield after it's over. Oh, oh! Yeah. It's just he just wails. He just Dreams, literally yeah. just breaks down and wails. It's just like, wow. That's, that's the thing behind the teasing. There is the idea is like I don't want people who aren't capable of going to war. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't want you in harm's way. Essentially, yeah. Because these um, are pragmatic good. people. Yes, they're they're not driven by ideology or anything. They're <laughs> driven by the limitations of what they know people can do. And this is this is what's been borne out by like their experiences over you know generations upon generations. They know how to make war, and they know who's good at it, and they know who should do it, and they know who shouldn't. And that's what they that's what they fight to protect. And it's yeah, it, it fits in perfectly with what we know about this entire culture. And it's Carl Urban just being a legend again. Yeah, Carl oh, yeah. Urban, man, <laughs> he's he was so, like Henry so Cavill. Underrated. 10 years before Henry Cavill existed. You know, like, I, I feel like he's an awesome, talented actor who just never quite found his niche. He's a big reason why I will be at least hoping to enjoy uh, The Boys Season 3. Uh, <laughs> did you see the trailer? I, I did see the trailer. Oh, no. I no, I didn't. Very episode 7 on us, Mahler. It's going to be bad, Gary. It's going to be bad. <laughs> It's gonna be QAnon and Dude, all. I'm so not fucking ready for them to have their commentary on Captain America. I don't give a shit what you have to say about Captain America, but they're gonna do it. Oh, boy. you don't want to know what they say about Captain America. It's in the comic book. So, for, it's so can, annoying. Can't you cause... have anything? Go on. Can't you have anything now that's just earnest and and honest and no, fair? no, and cynical, just... nihilistic. Well, th subversive. this is like when you talk about Captain America. I wasn't the, the biggest fan of him initially, but like the more I saw of him in the movies, the more he grew on me, and the more I just thought, you know what? There's something just really fucking awesome about that old-fashioned. I want to fight for my country and serve the cause that I believe in, and I'm willing to lay down my life for that. Is a um, resolve that I just love him for that. Yeah. And it there's oh. and it's it's a very old fashioned view of of like God and country and and you know cause and everything, um, and it, I just think it's great. It, it's such a nice refreshing thing from the cynicism that you see in so many characters now. You know when when Tolkien wrote uh, Lord of the Rings, it was threatening then. Okay, people go well it's of its time, and I've said that too. But it actually no, it was older than its time because irony was the writing of the day even from then uh it, you know that was starting to creep into storytelling and this was a very old-fashioned type of storytelling that was brought back in with a little bit of a modern twist especially with Eowyn and it and it and and who does it who did it resonate with believe it or not counterculture freaking counterculture of the 60s like this was the hippies star wars 
I think probably because of the pipe smoke. I, and who knows? <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> your uh, love of the halfling's leaf has dulled your wits. <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, it's 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 just we need to rebuild the hero. The, like this this whole thing about like storytelling needs to evolve to what ultimate deconstruction, where we're, we're just have four people sitting around a table in gray suits talking about nothing with no genders. I I, I don't know where we're going. You know, people. People are never not going to want heroes. Classic, um, awesome, old-fashioned heroes. Hell yeah. It doesn't matter how many times you, you try to reshape them and mold them into whatever fucked up ideology you've embraced, they will always, always want what they used to get from storytelling. It, it's, it's been the basic human instinct since the, the time that we could first um, conceive of storytelling, since we could first like you... tell mm-hmm. stories to each other. The more you starve people of it, the more they will demand it, and the more they will want it. And yep. when it Hell, comes, this is what these gives me hope. Where like certain projects make a shit ton of money suddenly, breaking records. We're just like, wait, what? Why? And it's like it just did the thing people wanted. Yeah, right. Yep. Rocket science. <laughs> That's crazy. We gave yep. the the fans what they wanted. Those icky fans. Ugh. Yeah. It's this mentality, I guess, of like, we're going to tell you what you want. Um, and the audience oh, 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 oh. responds quite, quite curtly, no, you fucking won't, son. We'll tell you what we want. Yeah. And we always known what we wanted and you're not giving it to us. So we're just going to, we're going to find it elsewhere if we have to. Yeah. Yep. And, it, and it's, it, I, I mean, it's, we're reaching its, its end. We are. I mean, you know, uh, it's spider-man's no way homes people are still talking about it yeah it just came out on digital but like people are still talking about it this thing's been out for months now and that was that reminds me of a real true hit movie um you know like freaking raiders of the lost ark was in a theater for like over a calendar year star wars was in the theater for over a calendar year same with jaws same with freaking uh titanic like think of it, you know, uh, that they, the Superman were all used to be in theaters for year for years, two years, and then they'd be re-released and people still be talking about them. Now it's like a month. It's considered a hit. We move on whatever. And, and what is even a hit now? We're not even sure. We're still not sure, uh, because of, uh, the coof and streaming and whatever we're doing. Uh, but like they're going to find out soon. Uh, the money's going to, uh, uh, economies are changing. Sorry to say, sorry to bring in the real world, but they're, they're, they're not going to be able to just uh, pour cash into streaming like they have been in the last three or four years. That's drying up. So they're going to have to either get pragmatic towards their promotion, uh, promote uh, towards their, uh, their approach to making uh, good content that people actually want to watch instead of pushing your agendas. Uh, and you better do it soon. Or people will find something else to do, or they'll watch something older, which a lot of people did during COVID. A lot of people picked up old books and old comics and watched old TV shows, and um, that was a good thing. I think kind of reminds me it was good. I, I do wonder sometimes, like in times of uh, I guess upheaval and uncertainty and stuff, like people I think instinctively turn to classic stories like comforting stories Mm -hmm. of of good versus evil and like old-fashioned heroes and stuff and i feel like that's what gives them the reassurance of continuity the things that have stood the test of time that that's what like uh helps people through i suppose um and it always has like it's the stories of the heroic deeds um the the people striving against the odds the 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 little guy who who goes up against um, you know this this huge indomitable enemy and somehow finds a way to prevail. That's the thing that gives people hope and and um, inspiration in their lives. It always has, um, and that there's something just really magical about that. And I feel like that's the thing that you don't get from so many films nowadays or so many stories that we're telling nowadays. Well, no, because we're not getting well. stories; we're getting messages. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and, then, and stories used to uh, offer us. Uh, they used to offer us ideas. They used to offer us uh, choices. What you know? Where? What do you think about this? 
Uh, what's your take on this? Were they right? Were they wrong? You know, th they would pose questions to you. Um, and now we're just getting partisan product uh, yeah. that's already saying, hey, this is what you should be thinking. Uh, this is what you should be doing. And because it's coming from a partisan position, people are just like, well, no, I, I don't agree. Uh, I, I don't agree with this stance. Uh, I mean, Star Trek, sorry to bring Star Trek into the Lord of the Rings, but with what happened in the latest episode, I haven't seen the latest episode. I've seen who's in it and I've seen, uh, and I just want to refer it back to when Kurtzman himself said, it's no longer about Star Trek. It's about using the platform to tell our messages. Mm -hmm. and, and their messages are propaganda. And people don't want propaganda. Uh, people, like you said, people love that. And uh, and I don't want to. I don't want it to sound uh, disrespectful. The word basic, but people want that basic morality. They want those those stories of of inspiration. They want those stories of of right, wrong, good, evil. Uh, they want to know that they can be a better person. They know that they want to know that they can be inspired from these tales that they can look at this hero and go i i can aspire to be a better person uh to to do the right thing to to be more compassionate to be more open minded uh but that goes completely against the 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 uh partisan propaganda that we're getting now and and something as basic as as spider-man uh they got three classic heroes uh, and they got three classic heroes, two of them from an era before this uh, ridiculousness started to take hold, that just wanted to do the right thing, that was just a good good old-fashioned battle of good Spider-Man versus evil Goblin or whatever it was. And and so it just it resonated with so many people seeing these just these classic heroes back on screen. Batman is known as a classic hero. Uh, so Batman's, you know, absolutely tearing at the box office at the moment. And regardless of how you felt about the film, the, just the draw of Batman being that classic hero was enough to, to pull people into the cinema. Um, and we need more of this. Lord of the Rings is, is, is a great story of good versus evil. It's just such a, such a you know, again, just a classic, uh, this band of, of, of people who have their own issues with each other their own infightings with each other setting everything aside because they have this this one goal that they need to achieve uh and even when the fellowship falls apart uh, and they and frodo goes off on his own the others are taking it within their heart to say frodo's gonna do it so we've got to do our part still even though he's not here so it, so it keeps it keeps that morality going and it keeps that inspiration going through everyone uh, throughout the whole story it's great classic storytelling uh and and it, it's so missed nowadays it's just oh it just it, every like with reacher recently with sorry i'm going on a bit and i do apologize um keep going but, it's great but but with reacher it was an, an amazon tv show it's not going to win any oscars but it was a really solid story Good. A really solid right. story, a mystery with a very good protagonist, uh, a very good supporting cast around him, and a very interesting uh, story that was apolitical, that that didn't that didn't delve in. It you know a couple of dips, you know there was a couple of dips, but it went along with the story and it fit with the story. It wasn't there like with the Naomi, uh, not the Naomi. Jesus Christ, it's all merging into one with the Ms. Marvel trailer, which is just like. Well, you don't see many brown girls from, you know, uh, New Jersey or wherever saving the world. And it's just like, they so... The brown girls from Louisiana and the yeah, brown Yeah, it's so specific. Yeah. It's just, you know, a hero doesn't have to be a color and a hero doesn't have to be from a, spe a specific location for you to, uh, for, for you to relate to them, for you to understand their, uh, uh, their reasoning, why they do stuff. It, uh, the hero is, is on a level above that everyone, and that's why, of course, classic heroes have lasted for decades upon decades upon decades. Yep, yep, yep. And every time that you go, you went to a, a convention, whether it be in the 90s, the 2000s, or wherever, there was a 
just a plethora of people from all different walks of life, whether it be social, political, uh, whether it be social, economic, whether it be ethnic, whether it be religion. Uh, you just saw a sea of, of different diverse people who are all brought together because of that specific hero, whoever uh, that specific hero could be. Uh, and uh, we we need to return to that. We really need to return to that. And, and until the studios, uh, I mean, in a cynical kind of way, understand that, you know what, uh, money kind of is going to, it needs to, to trump uh, politics right now because we're not making the money. Uh, and and this is why, I, you know, the Marvel MCU part phase four has been an absolute mitigated disaster. Uh, and it's been shown to be a disaster when the Batman breaks, you know, beats all of their movies in 10 days. Uh, where Spider-Man does 1.9 billion. I think it's now gone past the sum of all of them. It's gone way past the sum of all the movies put way together. Past. Way past. And then some. And it, and it just shows. It just absolutely, it just absolutely shows. And I think this is why... We can watch something like Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Rings, Two Towers, Return of the King. We can watch it, and we, we could probably just gush for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours because it's beautiful, classic storytelling that every one of us, and in the chat included, and I guarantee you the chat is full of a wide variety, a spectrum of, of person, uh, that we were all drawn together because of love of this uh this this you know whether when you want to be the films whether it be the books uh because of the the nature of the storytelling and, and oh we need we need we need this big time and we need it soon sorry run over that was pretty gay dude that was the best kind of way <laughs> super gay it's like ed from fucking uh sean of the dead just going gay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're you're right, and like I I can't I can't follow that up. Like yeah. ultimately, you've said everything that we we were going to say in a situation like this, and you hit the nail exactly on the head. This is what people are crying out for. the 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 fundamentals of great heroes and great storytelling are never going to change. Doesn't matter how you try and fuck with them, people mm. won't accept it. They want what they want, and they're not getting it right now. But they used to get it. Uh, and films like this are proof of it. Films like fucking um, No Way Home, I guess, are proof of it. Like you, like you said, you took some classic heroes from um, from a, a slightly older time. You brought them into a modern movie with with our latest incarnation. You didn't try and inject politics into it. You didn't try and push the message. You just told a good fun story. Of of all these different guys um, from different eras working together, uh, and 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 it was great. I mean, the the beauty of this this the Spider Man is it, it didn't it didn't disrespect the characters it brought in, and it and it paid off uh, some of their storylines. It it paid off Toby and and Doctor Octavius uh, when before Octavius was driven mad by the machine. It paid off uh, Andrew Garfield saving. Um, Michelle Jones, uh, when he couldn't say he, he couldn't save uh, Gwen Stacy, so he got some. So there was like beautiful, it's a little bits of heroicness uh, between those characters, cl just classic heroicness, saving somebody, um, you know, having re returning somebody's morality, uh, just just wonderful, just little little bits, and people need that, and people love that, uh, and and we got fucking Star Trek with political candidates running the, the earth to push i mean it, it's just pathetic beyond compare uh oh man i'm probably blocked by star trek i had to go at the moon <laughs> as you should they should have blocked think, all of us by now i know i think we all probably are to some extent you know, mike from red let me just block by all of them and he doesn't he's blocked surprise by me Shatner, the lightest. he's blocked by star trek by paramount yep. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm only blocked by uh, Paramount Plus, Star Trek on Paramount Plus. That's why I'm blocked by. I, I think, um, yeah, Fantastic. when Red Letter Media did their review of, of Picard, like season one, that was fucking devastating. Yeah. Um, for, for Paramount, like that was proper annihilation right there. 
Yep. That's what happens, man, when someone's just like obsessed and passionate about the thing, they'll just have all the references offhand. Some of the stuff he says in that video, I'm just like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but you do. Oh, they, they've, <laughs> they've done clear. they've done like videos like an hour long where they just talk about their favorite TNG episodes. Yeah, like, and the great. Yeah, and it, like their knowledge is fucking you know superb. Um, they're so clearly guys who are passionate about that stuff. It, this is where it all comes down to. It likely helped form a lot of their opinions in life. A lot of the shit they saw in those stories. So they mean a lot to them. Yeah. Picard but meant a lot to me. where this all comes from, man. It's where it all comes from. You know, I, I saw Picard as just such a great authority figure done right. Uh, yeah. Somebody somebody that, that came in with a, a very specific way of doing things, very stern. Uh, very austere, standoffish from the rest of his crew uh, because of the position that he held. And that's the way he he believed that it should be. And then we saw this amazing story over seven years of how a character like even Picard could un become to understand, trust his crew, uh, unwind just a, a, you know, a little bit, uh, bring them in, bring them closer to him as, as counsel. And still be that strong figurehead leader uh without being a, a without having to steal the scene you know without having to be the hero in every episode uh and and you know what do we get now mikey burnham every fucking episode space jesus everyone makes, crying makes, their makes, eyes makes, out and makes, hugging each other because they're oh yeah remember that scene where Riker and picard cried and hugged each other and validated each other yeah yeah, Th this favorite. is it's funny like there's a scene in season one of picard where picard goes to visit Riker on his on whatever planet he's staying on and they're like sitting out on like a a deck chair like overlooking a lake and like laughing together and then they put their arms mm. around each other and like i get what they were going for there it was a little bit of like just like close camaraderie but it's the kind of gesture that like those two characters never would have made in in the original series like they were never close in that way they had immense respect and friendship for each other but they didn't feel the need to be like embracing each other like that it's just that was that, that was jonathan was frakes and patrick stewart that wasn't picard and Riker. well you know god bless them that's <laughs> the that's just two old lovey-dovey actors who who just want to like you know peace out with each other and that's great but they're not their characters in this in this regard like they're they're that's just them as friends doing that mm. that's not their characters doing that no 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 it's just um yeah like the the whole the whole the whole ethos of what star trek is has changed beyond any kind of recognition um the, the in tng there was always that sense of yeah okay they're explorers now it's it's a very much more an advanced um, culture and society but it's still a military organization with a chain of command and respect amongst the various ranks mm. and people conducting themselves like actual officers and people and you know people that had been put in positions of authority now everyone's just having a good old pant wet and cry whenever like something bad happens and they have to let all that emotion out they have to talk about their feelings every five minutes. Emotions, um, dude. Emotions. So many yeah, emotions. It's, it's all about the feels. It's all about the feels. And it's so it's so sad to see what that remember, that's what they think these people remember these... when um data took Worf when Data was in temporary control of the Enterprise and he, he put Worf as his first. I and, love that. Uh, scene. Worf Worf was just, you know, he was like finally and Huffing and puffing to Data's decisions, and then Data just very calmly said, "Mr. Wolf, can I have a word with you in the ready room, please?" Certainly. Mm -hmm. And he comes in, and then he just turns around and he calmly just says, "You're not here to question my decisions." And then Wolf's just like, "Well, I was always told, you know, I was always free to voice my opinion when Captain Picard was captain." And he's like, "Yes, and I welcome that, but once I've made a decision." It's your job as number one to carry out my orders hmm. and not to, to question them and certainly not to uh, behave the way that you did in front of the crew. Uh, and uh, Wolf, you know, Wolf, does, he's just like, you, you're, you're right. And I'm, 
I apologize. And then Dave says, well, you know, if this has affected our friendship in any way, I, you know, I'm sorry. And Walt's just like, no, it's, it's me that could jeopardize our friendship. And I ask that you forgive me. And if you'll have me to stay on as number one, it's just done in a, in a proper manner between people in a chain of command and how they would actually deal with a, a, a situation. Uh, and and no tears, no shouting, screaming. The yeah, that's that's proper humans. like <laughs> yeah, high level shit. communication between people. It's funny if you ever look that clip up on YouTube, the comments are fucking gold because it's like people saying like I went into the workplace thinking this is how people dealt with each other, and I was so fucking wrong. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> I think there's a difference between you know. Going into McDonald's and a military organization. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very true. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's such a fucking brilliantly written, brilliantly mm. performed example of of just a person exerting authority um, and a chain of command and enforcing it and the other person recognizing that they're wrong without having some humiliating climb down. Uh, just like you say, Worf recognizes his mistake and he, he straight up says, you know, if you'd be willing to overlook this, then I would, yeah. you know, very like to much to continue in this role. Um, yeah, great. Really, really good stuff. Um, shame we don't get it anymore. Yeah. We get tears now. We get tears because tears. emotions well, and, and hey, feelings in hallways. Tie it yeah. back thematically. Who's the next victim? It's like, well, Lord of the Rings. It seems like. Seems like we know. We've got Lord of the Rings. We've got Obi Wan Kenobi is going to get ass raped. Um, Fuck, I'm so not looking forward to seeing that. <laughs> uh, you probably got Indiana Jones when it eventually comes out in about 10 years. Um, oh. Yeah, that'll be humiliating him and destroying him. Uh, so, yeah. We're all going to be uh, keeping an eye on Kenobi, right? Yep. Yep. Hey. I, I'm, I'm just watching the battle. I, I don't really care what leads up to it don't really care what happens after it i just want to watch the battle between the two and i'm waiting for kenobi to leave tatooine which yeah. was his only fucking job was to stay there so i give a fuck about the show though i can tell you like it doesn't move the needle one way or another with me. i i'm more interested in the strong diverse female character who's actually going to be good because she was forced mm -hmm. down this bad path by the patriarchy oh um, Garen fucking Tia. I will bet my life savings on this. Spot on. Every no, I, I'll Spot join on. you. I think they'll you. do um they'll do lip service to the idea of like actual storytelling. We'll get a couple of the kind of scenes we're actually looking for, maybe, but then the rest of it will be garbage. It'll be like a one division type situation or well, kind of all of them. It reminds me of The Force Awakens. The opening like 20 minutes of that film, if you ignore the fucking title crawl, has potential. Um, in terms of how they're going about introducing people, be it Finn, Ray, whoever mm -hmm. else, if you ignore the fact that it's, it's like really desert orphan fucking hell. But like, you know, a lot of visual storytelling from JJ, but then the film like falls off a cliff. And I just feel like they're probably going to do the same thing. Um, we talked about on EFAP, but like the first episode, probably going to show Obi-Wan in his daily life, right? What he has to do on Tatooine now to stay secret. And you'll have a few moments where he's looking over his shoulder looking at someone looks at him for a little too long you know that sort of thing and i'll probably be happy with that and then some insane nonsense bullshit will happen with the inquisitors and i'll be like great here we go this is what the show's actually about and then yeah. the cameos and the fucking battles of darth vader and i'll just be like we were never going to get a show that was going to be contemplative introspective about obi-wan and, and what he had to deal with as a result of Order 66. That was never going to happen, was it? Here, here's the thing, though. It's easy to do those introductory scenes with characters because yep. as the audience, your mind instinctively creates a mythos around them without the, the writer actually having to do it. Oh, they'll the fans will do the rest of the work for the show. They will they oh. will tell you about all the incredible arcs that aren't even there. Mm. When you reference the, those introductory bits in Force Awakens, same thing. Yeah, you get that. You get Rey... Yep. <clears throat> you know, living out her her, you know, meager existence um, on Jakku, you know, and watching that spaceship take off into the dusk, um, you know, sky, you know, just barely getting by on her rations. That's all great stuff, but that's easy stuff to do because you're not really telling us a huge amount about the character, and you're not having to build much depth into them. The audience is creating this image of who this person is in their minds. 
You're absolutely right. It's really low variable, really low complication. And but that's what JJ is right. brilliant at. He's brilliant yeah. at just doing really simple, like groundwork and letting the audience fill in the rest of themselves. And it's when he actually has he's, to put some meat on those bones, that's when he fucking falls apart as a writer. He's admitted as much. That bloody I'm assuming you guys saw it when it first came out, but his like talk about mystery boxes, Jesus. Yeah. He's just like advocating that you basically keep everything from the audience. This is like yeah. ugh. Keep well, everything because it's never planned. That's why they it's, didn't know what they were the doing with Lost when they it, when he yeah, started it's Lost. The, the, there's something to be said, I guess, for him. He's built a career on the illusion of storytelling rather than actually doing it. Yeah, and I, I think he thinks he's got something. You know, he's like he's figured something out. When I feel like we're all sitting there, like, well, we knew you could do that. We just did, don't choose not to. It's a genius business model, though. You, you work for him. Yeah, you basically um, say you're going to do it like a trilogy of movies or whatever, and it's like, okay, I'll do the first one. I'll get the ball rolling, um, set up a bunch of stuff that's just the, the classic mystery box thing, uh, a bunch of story hooks that can go fucking anywhere. You don't have to fill in the details. It's just create a bunch of interesting ideas for future writers to explore. Do it in a visually flashy way with lots of like nice, cool, fast-paced action scenes. Fuck off, collect your paycheck, let someone else pick up the pieces and just rinse and repeat. And that's how you build your career. It's it's a genius bit of uh, swindling. Mm. Uh, but it's worked for him because he's just bounced from, from gig to gig, just uh, failing upwards. Star Wars and Star Trek. It's quite a, <laughs> quite a career you got there. Yep. Now he's doing comic books. Yeah, well, and no, and Superman. Superman next. And Superman, yeah. 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 Well, there's rumors that might not happen, but we'll have to. That remains to be seen. That I remains. Five hundred million or something. What's that going towards? It did. It's going towards. I think developing one show so far, maybe <laughs> two, maybe two. All right. But like, yeah, he hasn't done much, and then he just popped on the scene over at um, at uh, Paramount. And I bet you there's some kind of clause, like if he doesn't develop something right away, he doesn't get the money, or maybe they just buy him off because. Uh, That'd be, you know, what it would be better to give J.J. Abrams, Jar Jar Abrams, five hundred million dollars to not make movies for you than to make <laughs> movies for you. This is the thing. Somehow his movies make money, though, or at least they used to. Sometimes they used to. I, I, yeah. I well, How I can't. What's the last thing he did like on his own? Rise of Skywalker. Does that count? Or in no. in, in all no. in all like, fairness to the making money bit, he's been given. Uh, billion dollar franchises to play with uh, you know it's not as no, if yeah, i think you're right um he's, it's not as if he's having to build anything up himself he's he's doing off the of back them. of the franchise the lads making um the new jurassic park movies like they're not making money because they're incredibly written it's the dinosaurs and the jurassic mm. park ip that's it yeah, that's man. it yeah yeah it, it's amazing like that that first movie jurassic world um a perfect example bad. of what, what we're doing with movies now is, yeah, well, exactly. Like, you're just, let's just rehash all the same exact um, ideas and story beats as the original movie um, in a slightly faster paced, more action oriented format. Um, and we'll make a few meta references to like sequels, always just wanting to expand on the original. That's it. Great. You know, make like $2 billion easily. That, that, that's what movie making is now. That's how easy it is. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that, the, <laughs> we've got no one to blame but ourselves. Ultimately, people are paying to watch these things. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, we do what we can to tell them to stop. <laughs> you know? it, it, yeah, we're gonna keep doing it, and it is. I mean, it's working. It's just going to take a lot of time, you know. But you're right. Like after, I won't even get in specifics, but we'll just say after the recent events with Disney and Marvel, people are still going to book trips to Disney World. They're still going to go. They're gonna they they're gonna go even though these they 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 fundamentally disagree with these beliefs and they're still gonna go. They're not gonna stay at the Galactic Star Cruiser though, are they? <laughs> no, they're not. They're not. What? But that's just because it's bad. That, I mean, like if it was good, they would be that bully. Yeah, they, for sure. Uh, if I yeah, if I was paying five thousand dollars for like two nights, I would want fucking Princess Leia in that like chainmail bikini <laughs> in my fucking room at my beck and call. Have to be two of them. At my back and call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, would you gentlemen be up for a couple of super chats? 
Yeah. Sure. Cool. All right. Let's see what we can do. Because we've got a shit ton of them from Mikey Gosler here. So I'll just go through them one at a time. Um, first one here. If it's so well written, how do you explain Gimli being the Jar Jar Binks of the trilogy? When Eomir tells them that they burned the bodies and Gimli asks, dead? Why don't you see that's bad writing? Cinematic venom for the win. Yeah, these are references. Don't worry. These are, these are things someone said who I think eventually said they were wrong about Lord of the Rings. So it's all good. Yeah. Uh, I, with the Gimli this, thing, I would, I would just Mikey, pin. Them. I love Mikey Gussler, but this is a guy who thinks the Donner Superman is trash. Just does he? That, oh, damn! That's your baseline right there. <laughs> uh, I love, I love Mikey. Mikey's a good guy. We just disagree on uh, a couple of movies. Well, here's some more for you. Um, <laughs> I like the line Sam says in Osgiliath. By rights, we shouldn't even be here because that's a nod to the fact that he, Frodo, and Gollum never went there in the books. That is true. Um. So yeah, can't can't fault that one. Uh, he also said Andy Circus said his favorite scene as Gollum is when he spits in disgust of Sam cooking the rabbit because that's his actual spit that you see on screen. <laughs> 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 I hope that's true. Um, <laughs> it's well known that Arwen was cut out of the Battle of Helm's Deep, and Liv Tyler practiced for months with swordsmen. She also shot scenes with her in Lothlorien talking to Galadriel. Thoughts on being cut, and would li- would you like to see them? Um, she wanted to cut. She wanted it cut. She was okay with it. She came out and said, nah, like the because the power was in her femininity. I, I agree. I oh. she's exactly right. I don't want to see Arwen um yarp. Um, I don't want to see her swinging a sword and, and fighting alongside everyone else. That's not what the character is about. Uh, no. and so it would have looked really weird to see her at Helm's Deep. So I'm glad they didn't do that. Sorry that Liv Tyler had to put in a shit ton of work for something that never happened, but there we go. Um, she, heard, she got a scene, you know, in fellowship anyway. So, yeah. Talking about Glorfindel. putting in a shit ton of work for something that ain't going to happen. P- rings of power. <laughs> I or, mean, yeah. it'll happen. It, it shouldn't it'll happen, happen, but it's, it's going to happen. Like, it's going to happen, but it ain't going to happen. I don't think the way they want it to happen. <laughs> the, the Like, female elves fought. They definitely fought, but they weren't like in pitch battles i like they were because they have powers for one they're strong but they're fighting other elves uh in some cases in a in a civil war and they're fighting orcs in other cases but there's not just a, they, they don't really talk about it a lot they 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 command people but it's in 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 one case it's to flee it's to fucking leave it's to get out uh and and it's making a decision that we've been banished and we're fine with it we want to go shit we want to go rule someplace in middle earth you know i want to go rule but i don't want to like command there's such as i mentioned that in my video there's a big difference between i want to command a troop of guys and i want to rule a land you know so yeah that's crazy. Um, last one from Mikey said, New Line wanted Peter to start the movie with Kate recapping the first film, but he thought audiences were smart enough to remember what happened and wanted the action to start immediately. Ironically, it was reversed for the first. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, um, there's a big narration at the beginning of the first movie because you kind of need it. There's a lot of shit going on that you need to explain. And, yeah. and the Amazon's going to go out and just copy it beat for beat. There is a there is a real like narration bit with Elrond and Galadriel where she pretty much explains exactly what's happening in the film yeah, <laughs> in yeah. two towers. He's yeah. just like I'm going to stand at a balcony while she telepathically tells me everything that's going on right now. Yeah, and th- there's a scene with uh, with Gandalf doing the same thing with Aragorn, where he's like just yeah. just he recaps the film to everybody. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, then I, I I tell you what though, I really like that Gandalf scene though because just the like ian mckellen is such a an amazing actor i was cheering and up just, one too i know but just and know. just the way that he was he was talking the way he's looking at aragon when he's saying it's just oh i just thought that scene was just well, great one of the things I, I really like is when he finds out sam is with him yeah uh, yes he's just like oh good good yeah it is good. That is good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, there's so many scenes. I think that in the hands of a lesser actor, they would have come across as cringy as fuck. But Ian McKellen just makes every one of them. Everything. Work. Right. He's, he's a legend. A, legend. You know, an absolute legend. Master at what he does. Could listen to him read the fucking phone book. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, Rob the Builder said, uh, part one, hail drinker, guests and chat. Uh, there's no fixing rings of power, but I think we can make it fun. Cast Toby and Andrew as the Blue Wizards and have Scarlett Johansson stand in for all the Galadriel nude scenes and stick Henry Cavill in every action scene. Now, if Moller can do the rest of the stream with his southern accent, uh, that would be fantastic. So, is, no, is that's... That... What so kind Moller, of... you now have to speak with a southern accent for the rest of the stream. Is this a British southern accent, or is this an American? No, they're they're talking accent. about the um, the reviewer guy, you know, Mr. Positive guy. I don't know what you call that accent, but... Remember, he, was, he spawned on real BBC. He spawned? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's kind of funny. I'd love to hear more of Az's. It's awful. It was this wholesome oh. critic. My southern accent is amazing. What are you talking about? What's going on right here, boy? You know what? Look, look at this. You stopped look right at now. this. Oh. You got a pretty mouth, boy. You got a pretty <laughs> yeah. mouth. Boy. You got a pretty <laughs> mouth. I Oh, oh! You got pussy right in your face, ass. Jesus! I know. This this stream's getting dirty. <laughs> My God! It just got, yeah, it just got rated eighteen. Uh, here's a question for for you, as from the the Ooh. Doctor Fourteen Blu-ray reviews said, uh, as why do you hate Barry Island? <sighs> oh, Barry! Have... What? No, no idea not what Barry, Barry Island. About. Barry this Island. Is, <laughs> this is the uh, this is Barry it's just Island. To put curry sauce on everything. Fucking can't stand it. <laughs> Barry Island, what's that? I have no it's idea. It's a Welsh thing. It's a, it's isn't a reference to Gary and uh, sorry, Gavin and Stacey. I'd never watched Gavin and Stacey. Oh yeah, uh, Doctor Fourteen Blu-ray reviews loves Gavin and Stacey. More just died a little bit inside when you said it's okay. that. No, it's okay. It's okay. I just love the <laughs> idea that Barry Island is something I'm familiar with, and just the idea is confused for Barry Allen. That's just funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a Wally West guy myself, but I don't hate Barry Allen. <laughs> Um, I'm really, more of a the non-binary the they them that they just brought in. My favorite is Ezra Miller Flash. I just think he's really good. Dostoevsky. Uh, uh, he's just so down to earth and fun. Fuck yeah. Pussy's I gone to eat. I didn't mind him in the scene in Snyder Cut. It was pushing the realm of of verisimilitude with him falling for a girl. I was like, I'm not feeling any chemistry here. Yeah, uh, he, that's I, I'll, I'll say, I'll say one thing. He was a million times less annoying in the Snyder Cut than he was in yes. the Joss Whedon mm. Cut. Was they they toned that way down, way and down. Moller, I know you, I know you prefer the Whedon Cut, but I will fight I you. Don't, I don't prefer on the this one. It's better. It's just it's better. It's better. I got a whole video about how it's better. There's way better characterization than Whedon's cut. They're both garbage. <laughs> That's my hot take. All I know, hey, I, I can end this now. I think we all want to see Ezra Miller take on the South Carolina chapter of the KKK. Yes. Like, that's we all want. I think the Let's world is a better place. That's see how that plays movie. out right there. Crowdfund him some ecstasy and just get him hopped up on E and have him take on the KKK. I my money's on uh, my money's Pregnant on it. women first. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think my favorite uh, moment w was him and Gal Gadot when they were trying to do like a, an interview together, and he was like m trying to make her say like Ah, patriarchy, your time oh. is over. And Gal Gadot was like, "Who is this fucking child who's talking to me like this?" <laughs> like, right? Not into it in the slightest. No, uh, yeah, it's, it was so awkward, <laughs> and the guy's so clearly like high all the time. Like, you gotta respect it. Yeah, you do. I mean, he's Medication. probably in any trouble. Well, yeah, it's probably it's it's probably like the Pfizer kind of high, not the street kind of high. So he's he's a little euphoric all the time, probably. But uh, yeah, that that'll end well. I'm sure it'll end just great for him. Uh, Flash delayed a year. Delayed a year. That's I'm so crazy, man. <laughs> Batman and Batman and guest starring the Flash in his own movie. Because like uh, I was geared up to be like ready to talk about it and stuff, and then I was like, "When is it coming out now?" And Frank was like, "Oh yeah, you know, like a year and a half or whatever." <laughs> I was like, what I, the fuck? I, they did that. Can't whole see how this on. film can be. It's just been a disaster from start to finish. This production. Yeah. This yeah. is going to be an, a production hell video. Well, okay. Did we not see the the DC 
in 2020, uh, 22 trailer before the Batman. And it was like all the movies <laughs> they delayed like two weeks later. Yeah. Like, what the hell? They're like DC in 2022. Nope. Not the flash. Nope. Not Aquaman. What is the assumed reason for this? Are they avoiding competition of some kind or are they uh, just company line is that there is not enough special effects people now in Hollywood and I'm oh, fuck off. Today's round round up of bullshit excuses. <laughs> and and all of that company line came from the person I talked to that I told you about. And okay. um, <laughs> And then I said to that person, bullshit. I'm like, I could believe that being part of the reason. Like, it's hard to get Starbucks baristas right now, too, in America. And Starbucks are closing in the middle of the day in California. That's happening. Um, But uh, I used to work in L.A. And, like, you threw a rock up in there. And you're hitting an animator, a computer animator, somebody who knows metadata. And they've got a script in their back pocket. Like, it's not hard to find people in L.A. to work. and and they're claiming it's Marvel and Disney uh, stealing them all. My belief is Batman's doing well. They didn't want anything to fuck it up because the last time they had a hit movie was Joker and they released Birds of Prey afterwards and it killed all the fucking momentum. So. But, but Birds of Prey Sucked. and the Flash movie have something in common. That what And what is that, As It's the same fucking writer. Oh, Yay. I'm so surprised it's played. I'm so well, surprised. Good news. Everyone likes Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey is one of the most famous, successful, beloved, critically acclaimed movies ever. I, I genuinely struggle to remember anything about Birds of Prey at this point. I remember there was an egg sandwich in it at one point. Sure, a pet hyena. Pretty much all I got uh, for you. Oh, God, I forgot about hey, uh, You know what? I, I have a... Maybe, maybe they should have uh, Patrice... Coolers uh, rewrite the script. I mean, she did sign with um, Warner Brothers last year, unless, unless she, of course, she's in federal prison later. But hey, oh. the, leader, the leader of BLM. Sorry. Oh yeah, done for fraud, wasn't it? Yeah, she's she's gonna be in trouble. Yeah, but Warner Brothers gave her a, a first look freaking TV and movie deal, like a huge. Oh, is she in trouble now? Miss oh, Mansion. Yeah. Ms. Mansion's in trouble. Oh, yes, they are. <laughs> states are being investigated right now for attacking. Eat the rich what? until Surprise. you become rich yourself, and then suddenly yeah, it's and a eat yourself. Story. Lots of yeah. unreported, uh, almost a hundred and fifty million dollars of unreported money. Let them uh, eat cake. Oh, and uh, Clinton people are involved in defending him. It's going to be funny. It's going to be funny. Whatever it is, I'm starting to laugh, but sorry, we're going to get down. Human nature is fucking beautiful. Bizarre, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> hey, I was like getting a charity and I was really high on drugs. You would have never seen the money. Isn't Ever. it funny? Like we, we've Where essentially got our modern day from? version of the ring um, and it's just, it's just cash. It's just, just cash. <laughs> it's what everyone's tempted by and it'll get you. Yep, I, it doesn't I matter. Know, how you talking about the horror movie, Marxist or socialist or whatever, whatever you guys like that money. Ooh, I can buy a house now. Capitalism's not so bad. Yeah, remember when she it's bought like, that mansion? Even that was Bernie fell victim to this. It's like, yeah, we're gonna yes. tax the millionaires and the billionaires, and it's <laughs> like suddenly you are a millionaire. It's like, oh, now we're just gonna tax the billionaires <laughs> and the middle and the class. trillionaire and the middle class. Yeah. <laughs> The middle class, we're gonna tax the shit out of them too. But yeah, it's like, oh fuck off, dude. We know what you're all about. Um, yeah, yeah here, here's another one from Billy McSquash Rosh says, I think Dr. 14 Blu-ray reviews should tell us where on the doll the bad man touched him. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> okay. Uh Ghost in the Craig, he said, Happy St. Patrick's Day, gentlemen. Ah. Happy, this, happy Paddy's Day to you. Happy I drank a, day. I drank myself a pint of Guinness and it was fucking great. Uh, Drinker, it was great talking with you on your Patreon stream. Also, cheers to the Friday night uh, Real BBC crew. Yeah, we've got like a <laughs> we've got yeah. a right crossover going on tonight. It's got, it's awesome. Yeah, we're gonna drag one of them over tomorrow. Can you still make it tomorrow, Holler? Oh wait, Friday night ties. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because we're because we're, we're gonna be short of Jeremy and Orion. Um, I can make up for I mean, that. I have I all to make the hot takes. Racism, but. Uh, you can make up for the, <laughs> all the other hot takes and and brag about your channel constantly. <laughs> I'm kidding, Jeremy. Only a little bit. 
Uh, <laughs> I love him. Uh, but uh, hey, hail team UK! Yeah, my God, I love my my UK uh, brothers, Mahler and Drinker. Thank you. We love you too, Gary. And <laughs> New Zealand doesn't count as New Zealand doesn't count. Plus, Wales isn't a country either. You're a British American <laughs> now. Yeah, and yeah, we're still. When you cool live in Scotland, in the people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. <laughs> <laughs> in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. What? Sorry. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> glass, houses, glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Glass houses. Oh, glass houses. Glasgow. Glasgow. Hey, it's from Glasgow University. Of Glasgow. 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 I love that. I I went in and dubbed it after he corrected me and i got a comment saying wow you really pronounce that really well <laughs> and i'm like i just said it to asimov <laughs> see they're like i'm from the uk and you pronounce that really well and i'm like yeah because i dubbed it in later <laughs> hey like the professionals <laughs> ah gotcha you should have dubbed it in really awkwardly as well, like totally different inflection. Glasgow. <laughs> I did. I enunciate it, but I guess I enunciate when I talk on my video, so you can't really tell. But I did super enunciate it to try to make it uh, yeah. obvious that I did dub it in, but it didn't work. Um, well, this next one, RRTNZ. He said, hail drunkler and guests. In my opinion, this film is very middle ground, not as personal as uh, Fellowship or nor as epic and grand as Return of the King. Gollum's scenes and Helm's Deep are great, but overall, it's the weakest of three. What are your thoughts? Wrong. No, no. I'd say you're probably <laughs> wrong on that one, my friend. No. I Well, I guess if my favorite is Fellowship and the follow-up probably is Return of the King, I guess I consider it the weakest of the three, but that feels like I'd apply 10,000 asterisks to that. I, I think, um, for me, Return of the King is... The, the biggest, the grandest, um, the most ambitious, but kind of the one with the most flaws. Um, and and maybe, so... maybe I could agree with that, actually. I need to rewatch it to make sure, but there's so much meaning in Return of the King, though, because all the stories get rounded off. Um, yeah. So I wonder if that compensates a little, like... Isn't you know, it great, though, the problem that we have here, where it's like, <laughs> we're, we're discussing three fucking incredible movies, and we're trying to pin down which one we love the most, and like, it's hard. none of them we would call bad, I don't think. There's a definite, ins they insinuate that there's larger forces at work that are aiding these impossible tasks. They are straight up impossible tasks. They should all fail. They were outnumbered, uh, there's no Frodo has no freaking business making it to Mordor, like none whatsoever. But hobbits are tough. Hobbits are tough, and being with Goldum, Goldum was a huge part of it, right? Uh, but there's other forces at work. Yeah, uh, that's said a couple of times in the film. So, Gandalf says it, doesn't he? Well, yeah. I mean, Gandalf is like spawned by the the gods well, so or whatever, the right? So. Yes, yes, he is. He is a, a, a basically an angel in the form of an old man but still has the powers of a very, very, like he's a, he's super powered. He's, he's definitely like, that's why he could like take his stick and fucking knock out like 20 orcs, you know, it's like, cause he's fucking badass. Same with uh, Arag Aragorn stronger than your average dude. You, you know, the Duna die, the, you know, the last of the new Minorians, the last of the men of the West uh, are, uh, yeah, they're, they're like superheroes. There's a real oh, theme of, um... be man, why can't I be like, Man. Women of the West, too. Don't forget the women of the West. Oh my God, they're like so fierce. Um, <laughs> but there, there's a there's a real thing that runs through all of these books and through the movies as well. Of you know, the people that we have available now are not the the, the great heroes of old. You know, they're they're diminished. They're not as powerful. They they don't live as long. They don't have the capabilities that they they once had but they're still facing up to this immense challenge and somehow they find a way to, to rally enough strength to make it through. And I think there's something just great and inspiring about that. You know, that uh, there's still greatness in all of us. There's greatness in people, um, you know, whether it's hobbits, dwarves, elves, men, as flawed and corruptible as we are, as, as um, much as we might, have declined over the years there's something great 
in us and what we're capable of doing. And I think that's, again, it's one of those great messages that you used to get in films that just makes you feel fucking awesome about being yeah. a human. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's a great, it's a great feeling. And, and and that has gotten so lost in, in the in nihilistic and and again it's you know it's our fault it's my fault I'll say my fault like I have got interested in those stories too that kind of flipped the script a little bit because they felt a little different but it's gone on too long and everything is just pure nihilism and that's why when I you know I I saw the boys season three trailer and like I read the comic book series I freaking loved it but I saw that trailer. And all I saw was splat, splat. Heroes oh God, yeah. Terrible, people being terrible. I don't want to fucking watch this. I have no desire to watch it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not watching it. I'm not. Don't worry, I'll, I'll tell you about how good it is. As don't yeah. worry about it. I oh, hated yeah. season two. I thought season two was awful. It was. Terrible. I'm a big fan of Jensen Ackles. I love Carl Urban to pieces. Yep. I just can't. I can't watch it. No, thank it's you. It's this. It's this feeling, though, isn't it? Of something was popular and before you know it before it can really take root like the, the hollywood gets their fucking tendrils into it yes and yeah yeah i see you're you're popular there you got a bit of a platform we can use for the message we're gonna just uh, fucking get right in there and take over it and before you know it you're just part of the fucking machine and it used to take longer when, when, when did sh like shows used to get political too, but it used to be like 10 year old shows. Uh, I mean, like look at the Simpson, they waited eh, 30 years instead of, you know, but, uh, like th no, they've been political for a while, but like they used to, <laughs> I was gonna say. they used to, yeah, they've been political for a long time, but, uh, like they used to take longer and now it's like a year you get one good season. You know, that's like a lot of people are saying like the Batman, the sequel will probably woke as hell. I probably I would agree until I see otherwise that I, I would agree. The only thing that's held out that I'm aware of is Cobra Kai to some extent. Yeah. That's oh. somehow managed to resist the, the the predations of Hollywood. And I just don't know how much longer it's going to be able to hold out. Um I don't know what predations means. Neither do I. I'm just saying it. It sounds okay. it sounds it sounds impressive. Okay. It's bad. <laughs> This one, always, this one just yeah. stood out to me. They're I fucking the love. They're, They're ripping the hobbits in eyes and God. <laughs> you gotta think the the, the orcs probably would. I mean, like if it was written today, damn right. Those, uh, the, yeah, the, well, the, speaking the, of the predations of Hollywood, right there, okay. <laughs> yeah. like Mary yeah. and Peter would bond over their mutual abuse, uh, <laughs> their, their yeah. intrusion. They're all uh, survivors. They're all survivors. Yeah. Uh, but didn't Kripke say, didn't Eric Kripke say, oh, you know, yes, for season three, I've got so much uh, stuff to say about Trump or whatever. And it was just like, if you if you, if you are still talking about Trump, yeah. if you still got Trump in your head, you're you're mentally fucking ill. Yep. There is something fucking wrong with you. Uh, the first season of The Boys I thought was great. I thought it was I really great. Like it. I thought it was I really, really, like really it, good. Yeah. Uh, and then the, just the, the fall in the second season, it was just like, oh, no, no. Because, and I've seen this before in other shows. No, so I'm quite happy to go, no, I'm done. I'm done. I know I know what's coming. I'm done. Yeah, well, you're not going to get any, you're not going to get any entertainment and, and fun out of watching it now. No. No, I and can, I thought the latest season of Cobra Kai was fucking brilliant. Dude, I, I like, love the latest season. I thought it was great. That, that came out on Netflix that I was so high on when they first came out. And it was Umbrella Academy and Ultra Carbon. Oh, and Ultra oh. Carbon was perfect, but I liked it. It was fun. And I'm like, man, there was so much potential with both of these shows. And, uh, and now and now I saw a trailer for Umbrella Academy uh, 3, and it's got oh. um, Elliot with the wig on. Oh. It's got Elliot with the wig on. <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, and like for that, the showrunners probably had little to say in that. And they're probably just like it's behind the scenes, just going, Jesus Christ, what happened? Well, okay. yeah, what the fuck are we going to do is with this guy in the comic books? Can we make her <laughs> like this? The, um, this is a long way from the trailer part, boys. Season yeah. two was was insufferable. Oh, Horrible. I never saw Every any of this. single I'm, episode was, was just. What is the show? Like, what is it about? Um, season season two. Two. Yeah, it's like a. Uh, 
yeah, it's like a, a group of children that were, um, they were all born with superpowers. And so they were adopted into this academy at a young age. Like the, the leader of it somehow sought them out and found them and brought them into the fold. And they've all That's got some curious. kind of ability. They're um, like, it's like the X-Men. It's like the X-Men and, 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 but they all wear like little school uniforms and it's them growing up when their surrogate father dies, their surrogate father dies and they all got to meet and they kind of reminisce and it all leads up and there's a, it, it's really good. It's really good. It's kind of quirky. It's fun. It's done by the same guy who does Legion, Steve Blackman, but that show went woke too. All this stuff that started before 2015 was fine. 2016 happens, show goes woke and it's unwatchable. And, and it doesn't matter how freaking talented you are. Like, <laughs> Why the last man? Fine. I can watch the first episode of that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I, you probably like it, Mahler, the first season. But the thing is, the second season sucks so fucking bad. I wouldn't want Yeah, to the first it. season plays around with time travel and like that? predestination yeah. and, and trying, to, trying to avert the apocalypse, basically. Um, one of the characters was born without superpowers, apparently, and she's always been shunned by the others, but then eventually she discovers she does have them. And so it's interesting. It plays with lots of different expectations. Um, Do you guys remember when season five was like the season of, oh, that's usually when a show yeah. starts to fall off? It's just yeah. two now. Two. You'd be so like, second to get season. One. Yeah. But then it, it doesn't fall off because, you know, they've just run out of ideas, they've jumped the shark, whatever. It's because. It's almost Ideology. like they, they've just they've they've attracted the attention of the fucking all-seeing eye of Hollywood, and it's just beamed right onto them and said, "Right, you need to inject the following into your your production." The you've got to tackle, on. Yeah, yeah, you've got to tackle racism. You've got to project feminism. You've got to do this, that, and the other. And like, it doesn't matter if what you produce is garbage. Just get that stuff in, no matter what. And that's what they end up doing um and that's when the show falls off a cliff uh, and that's exactly what happened to umbrella academy season two yeah. they go back to the 1950s in america and obviously everyone's racist and one of the characters suddenly becomes gay for some reason and like you know they have to deal with that and it's just all when they already had a just, character yeah it's just uh you're right it's they and, needed and, a gay character no, no. and the gay character had one of the best storylines in the first movie it's it's absolutely the best storyline. It's about it like a kind of a druggy getting his you know getting uh, reality, yeah. getting 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 his ass kicked in a way where it straightens him out. And it's it's actually a really good fucking story. And uh, but then you're right, they lean so hard into the identity politics, and it's that's not from the comics, by the way. The comic is is pretty good. It's uh, the lead singer of My Chemical Romance wrote it, Gerald Way. Gerard Way, sorry, Gerard Way, who used to work okay. for DC. Yeah. Um, it's called the Umbrella Academy. The comics are pretty good. Uh, show, uh, second season's trash. You want to come out? Um, <laughs> the, out the Outcast creative said here, awesome stream and guests. Lord of the Rings tells the most relatable theme of all humanity, good versus evil. Peter Jackson knew this. This story trope, regardless of your age, race, gender, or sexuality, is relatable yep. for everyone. Do the people yep. that can't relate to this? It's it's likely they were just like in a really bad mood, or they they like the idea that you couldn't find anything to relate to in all three films. I find that almost impossible. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like the amount yeah. it covers that is so fundamental. Just dealing with your own flaws as a human, trying to work together with other people, trying to you know fight for people who are weaker than you. Or, well, how many people uh, could see themselves in Frodo? You know, someone who is not a, a warrior, isn't an adventurer, um, isn't a great leader of people or a general or a wizard or anything like that. They are just a regular old person thrust into a situation that they're not prepared for, uh, finding a way to muddle through. Um, Frodo was the ultimate everyman. But none of us are fucking hobbits. We don't need to be, though. We don't need to be to identify with the situation he is in um that that was what lord of the rings was able to do well that's what normal people with empathy and and brains are able to like understand now there's this mentality of like well if i don't see a person who looks talks thinks and and feels exactly the way i do then uh i can't identify with them oh it's and you that's nonsense. called narcissism yes 
and you can't just have a friend like Sam is as every everybody's kind of maybe stoner blue collar best friend who just always hung out and always was there to go to a movie or whatever. Now they have to have sex. <laughs> yep. We can't, yeah. have, we can't just have friends. They got to have sex. So yeah, it it will be imp- like how this is how sad it is. It would be impossible to make Lord of the Rings properly. Now, so I mean, do we have sympathy for Amazon? No, because their trillion dollar company could say no to these fuckers anytime they want, but they won't. So they're they're going to lose millions, millions upon millions of dollars because they couldn't say no to a few activists because they're so afraid of reputation. And this is important. This is very important to listen to. These companies' reputation is now more important to them than profits. And I could get into some deeper stuff that I don't want to get to, get into on your channel, but you can guess a lot of you smart. It's people- your fucking social credit score. They've got it for yes. companies. I yes. fucking know this because I've I've done investment stuff with with various companies, and they absolutely have this. This yeah. is what they they operate on now. So that, that that that's being used to extort companies into activism. They don't. I mean, nobody's ever be- uh, thought they believed it because they don't. Uh, but this, uh, but this goes into a lot of uh, things that were cha- were um, were being reset. You you have to also take into consideration uh, award shows as well now, because yeah. these people are going for awards, and if you want the awards, you have to tick the boxes now. You have to have X amount of representation in your lead roles, X amount of women, X amount of this, X amount of that. And it it's just that do- is not how to make that is not how you you creatively behave it's easy to depower award shows now though like just don't watch and and oh yeah yeah i I think at this point they've become a joke essentially like ricky gervais struck the first blow and like they they just like drove the knife deeper in by like doing the exact things that he accused them of doing um and that it it's reflected in the ratings like they've absolutely flatlined across the board nobody gives a fuck about watching the oscars now everybody would watch the oscars if it was a roast like you, you got down to four or five awards, and whoever won just got roasted by the best comedians, like the most un PC roast possible. Like, it, like I don't know if you ever got saw the Comedy Central William Shatner roast from about ten years ago. It's one of the greatest roasts. Watch it; it's fantastic. Shatner gets just killed for two hours. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Uh, it's comedy you can't do anymore, but it's like that would be funny. That that would be like, yeah, best actor. Okay, sit down, and then everybody just gives them shit for 20, 15, 20 minutes. It'd be fun. Yeah. For me, man, the most fucking promotion they got was like different people's highlights making fun of them. And then now that's over, and Amy Schumer's going to be fucking presenting. It's just like, Amy yeah, fucking Hi, that comedy fucking powerhouse that she is. Uh, yeah, so she's... I thought it's a movie about my vagina. Yeah, that, that's her entire act. It's like, that's did I tell joke, you how yeah. my vagina stinks? It's, it's, that's not funny, man. That's never been funny. Yeah. Women aren't funny except for Chrissy Mayer. She she is, honestly. like <laughs> she, she is just a little fleck of gold in a big sea of shite. <laughs> like, she really is. She's wonderful. We love her. Um, Leon Kennedy says, salute to William Hart, RIP, world-class mm. actor and amazing yeah. narrator. I highly recommend his audiobooks, The Sun Also Rises and Selected Shorts. Now, he was a great actor. Um, yeah. It was great to see him appear in Doctor Who as the war doctor as well. Um, um, yes, yeah, that was great. There, no, no. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, how you nod into that, you motherfucker? I thought I saw- <laughs> I wasn't. I only heard the War Doctor, so I was just he was talking about John Hurt. You saw John Hurt, William Hurt. Hurt, William Hurt. Oh, sir, William, William Hurt. Hurt. Apologies. John, yeah. John Hurt's been dead for a few years now. Yeah, he has. Yeah, uh, no, William Hurt. Sorry, I was reading um, the chat too. I thought I just thought, I thought he said John Hurt. Uh, this this William, is what William I'm playing Hurt the Guinness and a few shots of Jack will do to me. William Hurt um, was in Dark City. And that movie was fucking awesome. He, he was, was General Ross, just like General Ross from the Marvel movie. Well, he, he was in the he was in the um, miniseries of Dune as well. He played uh, yes. Leto Atreides. I um, he played him really yeah. fucking well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he's a, he's been in a bunch. Of, like Altered States is a crazy movie. That I mean, it's an eighties movie. You'd have to get used to it. But it's Ken Russell. But it's it's crazy. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's about DMT and all kinds of trippy drugs. 
but uh, yeah, it's very sad that, uh, but I mean, not that I, people are saying don't replace him. I think you should totally get uh, what's his name from the other Hulk movie. Uh, why am oh, I, I saying you're talking about? Yeah, Sam, Sam Elliott. Elliott, Sam Elliott, yeah, just make him a variant. Uh, because he was a good General Ross in that, I thought he was, yeah, yeah. Hmm? yeah. Um, he Sam Elliott, look, he's, still... he's always fun to watch. Um, a voice, Rob, yeah, oh, that's uh, that's a rich voice right there. Um, Rob the Builder said, Some quick love for Gary, pizza with bacon, pineapple, jalapeno, and barbecue sauce drizzle is my go to for movie night. Don't let him keep us down, Gary. Yes, so bacon, pineapple, jalapeno, and barbecue sauce drizzle. That sounds like a nice combination, or, or a buffalo sauce. Like, well, we do the spicy hot wings here, and so we have a thing called buffalo sauce. Not sure if you guys have it in the UK, you probably, yeah, yeah, we got buffalo sauce, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you put that on the pizza too, and it just whoo, whoo, it's good, it's good, yeah. No, that's fair, dudes. We used to have a good um, Domino's used to good do a pizza over here called the Meltdown, and it was great because it had um, jalapenos, chili flakes, and mustard. Um, and it's <laughs> oh, yeah, that'll put some hair on your ass. <laughs> yeah, well, it'll, it'll put it on there or it'll burn it off. One of the two, yeah, one of the two. Uh, I'll do a couple more and then I'll finish up. Um, XSL said, uh, read Iman Villani letterbox reviews and pick a favorite. Um, okay. I don't know. Um, Wolfblade Kenobi said, I looked out to see the dawn. None knows what the new day shall bring him. Aragorn to the Orc army at Helm's Deep. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Nice. Yeah. Um, Trenton Quinn says, hey, Mauler, uh, would you say it's Hello. easy to go from Bloodborne to Elden Ring? I haven't played the other Souls games, and I'm contemplating getting Elden Ring. Bloodborne is much faster, but uh, to be honest with you, I don't want to put anybody off from doing whatever order they want. Just do whatever order you want. Go out there. You do you. I love Bloodborne. I, I quite love Elden Ring. They're very different, but in many ways the same. It's hard to say. Um, jump in, my man. Just jump right in. Good advice for life. Um, Unhinged says, I have one tower right now ready for the drinker and panel. Nice. Um, Scottish Will said, which is the best Rohirrim call to your mind? To the king or death? Always get goosebumps with Theoden's call. Oh, I love the chant to death. That's so fucking yeah. great. Yeah. Um, I love that. I love uh, Theoden's speech when he's when they're about to charge um, at Helm's Deep, mm. where he's like, now for wrath, now for ruin, and the red dawn. It's just oh, fucking he's, great. He's Fantastic. Reading, uh, the poem of the. I, God, I forgot the name of the poem. Sorry. It's like the White Horse or something like that when he's like, you know, the days have gone down in the West. Yes. How did they come to that? I love that because uh, it's so on point to what's happening right now really oh is. yeah chris uh, yeah um there's a question uh, from trucker mark uh, updates on your plushie delivery so it should be anytime right now um they said in march so they're going to ship uh anytime now so you should get them very very soon uh, they'll still you... stop pouring in and it usually happens eventually <laughs> yeah it's, it's weird because there is that big long gap between like the Mm. you know the sale period the the sort of funding drive and then when they actually ship because you've obviously gone through this more what is it with this bloody emma watson meme oh it's off. It's, I, yeah it's, it's, it's really getting like, out of the control look at this it's getting out of control now <laughs> 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 Lauren Southern for some reason, and she's like right wing Twitter, and I'm like, what the fuck is right? People are just memeing. They're memeing. Memeing. Okay, calm down. Nobody thinks Emma Watson's ugly or or that particularly hot. Uh, she's Hermione. I remember her when she was a little kid. I'm not gonna like. She, she looks a bit rough there, like. Uh, it's just it's, it's probably a bad, bad photo. Yeah, it's it's a bad, bad, photo. bad photo. It's a bad yeah. photo. So people are memeing it. It's it's just a bit of a laugh. And then yeah. I remember when the Lauren Beyonce Sutton's one. just going on about right wing to it, and I'm just like, yeah, Lauren, like, Lauren, really? Are you? Oh, that's not right wing. That's right just wing. using woman going. Goes back. We can't look our best all the time. Okay, we get it. It's a joke. Just fucking get joke. over it. Yeah. You know, if it was a guy, nobody would give a shit. It would just fight it funny. Give a shit. No, nobody knows know. that we meme all the time, including ourselves. Exactly. <laughs> like yeah, like if we didn't take the piss out of each other, there would be something yeah. fucking wrong, man. Um, 
Like here's one. Uh... Have you seen the beginning of Friday Night Tights? Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every week. Perry um, hates us. <laughs> yeah, and it's great. it's great. Perry's a fucking legend, honestly. He's a legend yeah. and he's sad. Great stuff. Yeah. Uh, Bane Man said, all I'm saying is the last time a small group of men took on the two towers, it wasn't a very fun day. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, and I'll finish up with this last one. Uh, Jamie Boyer says, I found you all via as What a rabbit hole that's been. Thank you for the hours of entertainment, you beautiful bunch of bar stools. Oh, what, hey. what a Thank glorious you. way to end it. <laughs> really? nice. It'll be Fine. cool years from now talking about how we all met and stuff. Because I reckon we'll probably be talking for a long time. <laughs> yeah. 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 I remember I remember the day that I met a critical drinker. I, you guys remember that Star Wars? Like, no. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it was it the space track? I, 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 the pub where Tolkien used to meet with C.S. Lewis. Apparently, it got saved as mm-hmm. somebody saved it. The t- the the tavern that he that Tolkien. Oh to. yeah 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 yeah. We really talked about it closing. We're like, why doesn't somebody crowdfund it? Like the Tolkien estate or something like that. Apparently, somebody saved it. So that, um, that's got to be a national monument at this point. Yeah, dude. Like the boozer uh, where Tolkien got pissed, like man. <laughs> I'll, I'll go there. I'll just drink coffee or whatever tea and hang out. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I love that Tolkien just reflected himself in the hobbits. You know, that they, they loved, they loved drinking. They loved good food. Um, they loved like the simple out. pleasures in life and they didn't really like Thank hanker for nice garden. Talk yeah. With just, just simple stuff. Simple stuff. How rad is that? I, I, I like smoking my pipe, turning, yeah. Planning things, eating and drinking. It's, that's not bad. It's not bad. Existence, yeah, just chill existence. It's not not bad. Schmoke but yeah, me. guys. Um, I guess final thoughts on on two towers. I'm going to say it was all right. It's all right. It'll, it'll do. It'll do. All right. uh, <laughs> one of the greatest movies ever made. I was furious when it didn't win uh, best picture. That's when I was cursing the Academy uh, forever. Um, watched it. I've I've seen it two hundred times. Easy. I think that's probably a low estimate, though. Love it. Yeah. No, I get um loved it when I saw it in the theater. Um, loved it just as much when I rewatched it for this stream. Um, even if it was the pussy theatrical cut. I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, well, but I- just uh, made me feel great. Stirred the same emotions that it did twenty years ago. Um, fun, moving, poignant, exciting, just great stuff. Um, it reminded me why I love movies so much, and it was a mm. pleasure to do it. And it's been a pleasure to talk about it with you guys tonight. Same. Yeah, I mean, I I saw it uh six weeks ago. You know, the whole thing on a Sunday. Six weeks later, extended cut. Feed me Seymour. This is this is food. This is food for the brain. It's food for the imagination. Uh, it's food for fantasy. It's food for escapism. It, it nurtures all of those uh, amazing uh, qualities. And, it, and it's just an, an epitome of, of why we love great storytelling and why we love uh, great fantasy. And, and, and Tolkien was, there's no other way to say it. he was just an absolute legend. Um, and you know, seeing this adaptation, which slightly different from books, I know, but this adaptation by uh, Peter Jackson is just made with such love, and you can just feel it in everything from the cinematography to the way the actors are just absolutely throwing themselves into the roles. Uh, it, it, the the amazing sets, the costumes, absolutely just everything about it is is just beautiful. Uh, and uh, I could quite happily just go, like I said, I could quite happily just go and watch Return of the King right now. No problem. No problem. Uh, you know, Fran Walsh, Philippa Boy, uh, Boyens, got to get their due. They wrote all three of these films. They did a fucking fantastic job with Peter Jackson, and, and you know, the, the, the two women wrote this because women wrote movies before. Hey, who knew? 
Yeah. They could write yeah. good, really good movies as well. Yeah. What is this Emma Watson meme now? Come oh. on. Oh, I'm going to have to do it. Uh-oh. Why? 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 <laughs> 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 what? Come on! Wow! So one of the, one of the most legit horrible deaths in movies. Yeah, as well. so good. Oh, a meme is born. You just <laughs> another one. Go out into the world. It's a beautiful thing. Poor Emma. Poor Emma's <laughs> like Emma should just own it, right? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If she owned it, people would be like, "Top bird." Yep. yep. Top bird. <laughs> yeah. Top bird. <laughs> That's outstanding. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like thanks, thanks to you guys for for coming in for this. You've been an awesome panel, um, as Fun. always. I expected no less. Um, and thanks Thank to you. thanks to chat. Thanks for all your awesome super chats. I know we didn't get through all of them tonight, but I will absolutely catch up on them. Um, and as always, thanks for the, the the mods and the great work that they do. You guys um, you work your arses off every time I do one of these streams. So thank you very much for doing that. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's pretty much all I can think to say. Has anyone else got anything? Uh, no, thank you for having us. Fun. Thanks for yeah. <laughs> that was thanks that was everyone. Good. All righty. All right. Well, that's all we've got for today. So go away now. <laughs> <laughs>